Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to the Sheffield Steelers broadcast of their Continental Cup Group F fixture today against HK Gommel of Belarus. This game is taking place from the Gigantium Ice Arena in Aalborg, Denmark, where the Sheffield Steelers have already played two and won two. But progression through to the next round is not yet confirmed. The Sheffield Steelers still need something from this game or some help from elsewhere. We'll run through all the scenarios for you very shortly, but I'm here today with Ron Shudra. And Ron, the Steelers have done everything they needed to do so far, but the job is not yet done. No, definitely not. They know they got to come out and they've got to get something out of this game, whether it be that one point or the two points would be perfect. You know, that or not not give up too many things, uh, too many goals against. So defensively, they're going to have to be strong. We don't know exactly what, they're, what uh, the team's going to do coming out. Obviously, they're running four lines against Sheffield's three today, so... Three games in three days, maybe that fourth line's going to tell a little bit. A little bit smarter play in your own zone, clear the puck and keep it down on the other end as, as long as you can. We haven't really seen fatigue be a factor for the Steelers. They've been strong enough in the latter stages of the third period in both games, scoring a late goal against Allborg and holding on to their lead yesterday. But if the tiredness and the short bench is going to have an impact, it's going to be today, isn't it? I would have thought so. It'll be it'll be late in the game. It'll be that third period. So guys really need to concentrate on ice time and ice levels, especially the first period. First period, keep everything fresh. Roll everything. Literally roll everything. Don't get stuck out there more than your 30, 40 seconds. Because we've seen it before. You get guys stuck out there a minute and a half or whatever, even on a penalty kill, and all of a sudden, you know, come second, third period, your, your, your energy levels are down. So make sure, get them. Chop and change them in a hurry. Find out who's fresh, who can go, and who can be the first guy on the ice uh, for your line. So just to run through the scenarios for you then, the Sheffield Steelers have played two and won two in regulation. They are on six points. If the Sheffield Steelers win today, they will top the group nine points and they'll be through. The top two teams of the four progress to January's final. But if the Sheffield Steelers win in overtime or in a shootout, that's okay as well. If they lose in overtime or a shootout, that's okay as well. If they lose by one or lose by two, that's okay as well because it needs tiebreakers amongst just the three teams who could potentially be tied on six points if all Borg win later. Basically, the Steelers just need to avoid losing by three or more. But, Ron, you can't go into a game saying... Just don't lose by too many tonight. Oh, for sure. You know, you, you're going out there. Anytime you're going out, you're going out to win the game. You may try to win the game, you know, through a, a good defensive play and then catch teams on the break. You may want to just absolutely attack and try and get it over within the first period, try and get up those two or three goals to give you a little bit of leeway, which would be a great thing. Obviously, if Sheffield can get get the first goal and maybe get up two, even if it comes 2-1, it makes it a lot harder for the, for, for the other teams that are in the group to uh, to get where they need to be. So it's got to be the hard work. They've got to go out hard. They've got to be thinking positive. They can't be thinking it's a negative game and play in a negative way. They've got to go. They've got to forecheck. They've got to pass the puck. They've got to keep possession away from their own zone. And then when they do get their one or two or three chances, they need to do a DeLuca, boom, back of the net. You know, you need to do a lateral, boom, back of the net because you're not going to get a lot of chances. So get, get them done and get them over with early. Well, earlier today we had a chance to catch up with our man in Denmark, David Sims, once again reporting from his hotel room. Jonathan, Ron, a very good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all of you watching at home in uh, Blighty. Here in the team hotel, the boys have just had uh, lunch, gone for a little lie down and uh, they'll be heading to the rink in about 30, 45 minutes time. The rink's only a five minute walk away. Don't worry, Dean and I will be taking the uh, club car. Um, a very important day, isn't it, for the Sheffield Steelers? We could progress through to the uh, the finals today. Unfortunately, the same lineup as yesterday, which means no Connolly, no Valorand, no Dowd, and no Eberle for Aaron Fox's team. I haven't been told officially, but I've got the feeling that uh, Barry Brust will get the start for the game. That's what uh, Aaron was talking about last night. He hasn't confirmed it yet. But expect uh, a big bad Barry uh, to start in goal for us. I'm sure Jonathan has already explained all the permutations to you. Basically, it's a one-point uh, separation if Alborg uh, beat Riga tonight, and we expect them to do so. And if Gommel were to beat the Sheffield Steelers tonight, today, then we'd all be tied on six, so it all goes to goal difference. Basically, if we win, if we draw, if we lose in regulation, if we're losing overtime, sorry, then the Sheffield Steelers will progress. Just one kind of point needed. If we do lose to Gommel, then of course we can't afford to do so by more than two goals because of the uh, the goal difference between the teams. So all the calculators have been out overnight, and if 
French is here from Ice Hockey UK as well, confirming all that to us. Um, but other than that, we're ready to go. No doubt, no Eberle, no Valoran, no Connolly for the Sheffield Steelers. But other than that, we're going to give you the ball a kick. Hope you're enjoying it back home. You've got a nice studio there, Jonathan. I think Dave Burnham's up the budget. Nicer in here than that hotel. Well, there's the team news then from David Sims, still missing the players they've been missing, well, throughout the tournament since Connolly uh, got hurt during that uh, that first game. But the Steelers have got plenty out of Alex Graham, who stepped in, including the first goal yesterday. Yeah, he did a great job, a two-on-one yesterday. does a good job keeping control of the puck and a nice hard wrist shot, low stick side was a perfect place to end up and a great, great start for the, for, for the Steelers. Well, let's take a look at the Steelers lineup today then. We can confirm that it will be Barry Brust in goal. The team sheets have come through and he's got the nod over Rock Stojanovic. But really, with the way both netminders are playing, Aaron Fox can't go wrong whoever he picks. No, to be fair, both have, have, have made some big saves when they needed to, uh, to to help their team out and, and to get them along the way to the two wins. So fantastic effort from both of them. Steelers' penalty killing has been a strength so far in this tournament. Eight out of eight. A couple of power play goals uh, for Gommel so far in this tournament. You think if the Steelers can be clean on the penalty kill, that's going to be good going forward. Well, again, going into a third game in, in, in three nights, you're going to have to not put yourself in a situation to take you know little little bad penalties, you know, the little hooks and the little chops and the little bits and pieces that you don't want to. You know, we, We've seen a couple, a little bit of a back check, a little tap on a stick that gets called, you know, a little bit of a lazy hook here and there, but... If you're not putting yourself in a situation like that, and obviously if you are chasing or, or putting back pressure on somebody, remember you got your D-men in front of you. You know you don't need to, to give that hook and that tug on the hands or the gloves or the sticks. Let the D-men take them. You just put pressure to make sure they can't make a good pass coming to anybody from behind. It was a 3-2 win for the Sheffield Steelers yesterday against Olymp of Riga. Here's the best of the action. And the Steelers got off to, well, the perfect start, really, and very first shift of the game. Alex Graham in on that line in place of Brendan Connolly, and we know that guy can finish. Well, yeah, that's that's always been Alex Graham's game, you know, all the way through juniors and everything else. You know, he, he has the ability to score goals and, and put points on the board. And, you know, it's a fantastic wrist shot all the way in from here. You can see he's, he's coasting, he's looking, heads up. I mean, that's a great little wrist shot technique, you know, off the off the toe of the uh, the, the stick. You know, you see we, we talk about DeLuca doing the same sort of thing, and, and that's just a great one. And that was Matthias Sointu scoring his 10th for the Sheffield Steelers. He hasn't been with the team since the start of the season. What an impact he's made. And a shot straight from the face off Hodgman. Another assist for him. In fact, two assists for him yesterday. He continues to pile up the points as well. well. He's he's a fantastic guy. He's got such patience on the puck and he looks. And everybody knows, get to an area and, and expect the puck to come. And, and exactly there, he sets that up on, a power, or on, the, on the face off, which I'm sure he did. And wins it there and bang, bang, it's in the back of the net. But Olymp, we're not going to go quietly. And they reduce the score to 2-1 with that little finish in tight from Meseraups. And that put the Steelers just under a little bit of pressure. It was early in the third period. You want to set the tone. You want things going well. And it put them on the back foot momentarily. But the Steelers' own power play goal restored the two-goal cushion. Exactly. Great great response is what they needed. It took a little while to uh, to get that, that chance for them. But it was a huge, huge goal, especially the power play at that time of the game. Because obviously this becomes you know, the game winner, doesn't it? it it's, it's something that's very, very good. Jonathan Phillips in there, nice hand-eye coordination, bangs it down and bounces it up and over the goalie. The Steelers went in search of a fourth, but maybe overcommitted, and left a gap going the other way, which Olymp took full advantage of. And the 3-2 goal scored by Grinbergs. They pressured right at the very, very end of the game, but the Steelers were able to hold on for a 3-2 victory. Two played, two won, both in regulation. And it does put them in a very strong position, but... They will want to keep the standards high. They will be playing to win this game, no doubt. Oh, for sure. You, like I say, they're, they're, you know, you're any professional that goes out on the ice, you want to win games. You're not there to lose or, or draw. You are going, but you have to be aware of how and where you are on the ice. I mean, obviously, you know, Coach Fox is not, he's, he's not a, a coach for, a re, for, for no reason at all. He's a very smart man. He knows how to, he breaks stuff down. And same sort of thing, you keep your third man high in the zone above their players. You know, you don't commit three guys down below the goal line if possible. Make sure you don't give up the odd man rushes. We saw that in the Alberg game. The players were way too low, and all of a sudden it was three on two, four on two, two on ones for a lot of that game. And, it, and Alberg could finish. Maybe the, the, the game would have been different, but they had a lot of trouble finishing the, the, finishing the, the, the plays that they created. So we're off and running for today. The players are taking to the ice at the Gigantium Ice Arena in Aalborg, Denmark. The Steelers in their home orange tonight against HK Gommel of Belarus. A regulation time defeat for Gommel doesn't necessarily mean 
that they will be eliminated. They can still be a three-way tiebreaker if the Steelers end on nine points and the other three teams end up on three. There's still a possibility they could sneak through on goal difference, depending on how other games go. But for the Steelers, they know what their job is. As the starting netminder for Gommel today, Maxim Lubsky, only 20 years old. As the teams line up on their blue line. No national anthem before the game. We do, of course, hope to hear the national anthem of Great Britain and Northern Ireland at the end of the game, because that would mean that it's a, been a Sheffield Steelers victory. Referees for today's game, we have one from Denmark and one from Italy, Rasmus Ankerson and Alex Lazeri. On the line, two Danes, Albert Ankersterner and Nicholas Nosen. No change to the Steelers' lines. They're going to keep running with what has worked over the last couple of days. So it'll be Hodgman with Latal and Sointu. It will be Armstrong with DeLuca and Mosey and Valdix with Phillips and Graham. No need to change a winning formula. No, don't change nothing. You'll just like I say, make sure you play tight in your own end and, and push that puck up. See if we can get a little bit more stretching out the uh, out the Steelers. We keep mentioning it. They didn't do it against Alberg. They did a little bit more yesterday, and we'll see what they can uh, get allowed to do today. This helps to uh, alleviate a little bit of pressure in your own zone. It puts a little bit more pressure back onto uh, the, uh, the the away team today. So get it in there, get it down the necks, and, and try and keep that pressure on all the time. And as you can hear, the Sheffield Steelers supporters are already in good voice. And we are just about ready to go in this one. The Steelers are in orange and black. Gommel are in white and black. The Steelers' final game of Group F is underway. And possession will come back the way of Gommel. And they'll send it forward and immediately into the offensive zone. Important that the Steelers get off to a good start. They don't want to get on the back foot early. Soin to trying to take this one into the offensive zone. Just about managed it. Has to take a hit to make that play. Latal can't gather it behind the goal and it'll be brought forward by Bovin. And that one is whistled down. We have an offside call on Ambrosiecik. Already looks to be a little bit faster paced game than it did uh, yesterday in the afternoon. So I think we're going to see a little bit more open ice here, a little bit more back and forward. More to the advantage of the four-line team to go back and forth a lot, but you know Sheffield more than capable of, of, of getting opportunities in on the net on the rush as well. So we'll see how this sort of pans out here going early doors. Face-off one back by Gommel. It'll be slapped in around the boards by Voronov. Near side corner is Dadanov. Suso going after it as well. It'll come as far as Todd. Under pressure, but plays the pass forward. Can't find a teammate though. He's looking for Mosey. Todd happy to see it come straight back to him. Saksu Danielson. Long angle pass forward. The chase is on, but it won't be reached by a stealer, and it will be whistled down for icing. Yeah, just a quick uh, try and regroup there through the middle of the ice. John Arslan does a good job re-engaging on the play. If you watch him, you know, he's circling away on, on the first play there, and it goes D to D, and he quickly re regroups himself, getting to the middle of the ice. Just unfortunately, the pass doesn't quite connect. It ends up back in their own end. Steelers win the face-off in their own end. We'll just be looking to get this puck out of the zone and get a line change in after the last one ended with an icing call. DeLuca digs it out. Doesn't quite get across the line, though, but it is taken back over the line by Kudratsev. Sends across to the far side by Ivanchikov. Sends the Steelers' defence around. Forward by Saksu Danielson. Tipped forward. This one's going to be icing again. The Steelers didn't get the line change in, and that's now back-to-back -back icing calls in the early stages. Well, we were, we were talking about it early doors, weren't we, saying about getting the uh, all the lines involved here, not being out there too long. A little bit of trouble there, but they did try the stretch pass again, but Gommel was smart. They actually closed off the boards and it had to go through the middle of the ice, so DeLuca couldn't get a hold of that one. Should be an opportunity here for DeLuca to accelerate away. That'll get the defenseman changed. DeLuca takes the shot on first save of the game for our Maxim Lubsky. Back checking from DeLuca, wins the puck back. And the Steelers will go again. This time they will just take the opportunity to change their forwards. First venture out for the Steelers' third line. 
Schultz plays it centrally, intercepted by Kuzeyev. Players go to the corner. Who's going to emerge with it? Will slide around to Valdix, far corner. And just drops it back under pressure. And Gommel will take the opportunity to head back for a line change of their own. Nice little play there by Valdix. Just relieving a little bit of pressure, knowing that we couldn't get it up the ice. Long pass intercepted. Schultz trying to win it back. Can't quite manage it. Ambrzejczyk played it to the back post. And it didn't quite work out. He was looking for Radovsky. Voronov. Shot comes in from Ravenko. Nothing too alarming, though, for the Steelers in the early stages. Just what Barry Brust wants, a nice little shot from the outside just to push that away with his blocker. Sointu just lost control of that one. Ambrosiecik brings it forward, tries a little trail pass. Then it was sent forward, and it didn't quite stick on the stick of Razvodovsky. Puck into the corner. Ivanshikov loses out. The Steelers will flip it to the near side. A little bit of room for Keaton Ellaby. He's at the end of his shift. Steph, Sheffield's under a little bit more pressure in the defensive zone. Gommel obviously forechecking a little bit harder than yesterday as well. So something they're going to have to worry on. Or work on, sorry. Suslo. Carried it a long way. I'll get it back into the corner. A little bit of help from Karabanov. Voronov. Plenty of time in the offensive zone. The shot in on Brust. It was off his chest and the Steelers first to the loose puck. They can't quite get it clear though. Another one comes through and Brust gets hold of it with traffic in front of him. Karabanov hard to shift at the top of the crease. Yeah, but the Danielson does a good, good job there. Wrist shot coming through. Barry Brust sees through a little bit of traffic. But Sheffield guilty a little bit of not getting the puck out, a little bit of a turnover there up near the blue line, allowing a bit of pressure back in. So, again, something they've got to be, be careful of. Again, they didn't do an awful lot yesterday, maybe because they didn't have as much forechecking pressure. They didn't turn the pucks over too much in their own end. So they're going to have to just pay attention to see what's going on here. Boyko's pass intercepted by Graham. And he'll flip it down the ice into neutral territory and then up around the Gommel bench. Puck is still alive, though. Actually got stuck on top of the boards. <laughs> yeah, a couple of players were sort of waiting for a whistle to go, and it didn't, and Valdix brings it in. On for Graham. Back towards goal, looking for a tip from Valdix. He got all the way through to Lubsky. Had to make a stop. Schultz keeps the puck in the zone. The Steelers want to spend a little bit of time in the offensive territory. They get a pass out towards Jonathan Phillips, and the shot on goal was saved by Lubsky. Yeah, Phillips doing a great job at just arriving at the right time when Valdix could see him coming through. A nice little pass, tape to tape, and Netminder had to be sharp on that one. Grigorenko. Sent forward by Magaletsky. Now with David Phillips down the boards. And one takes a deflection. The chase is on. Won by Magaletsky. Kudratsev sends it forward. Kuzhev trying to get onto it. He can't. Round on the far side. The Steelers close in, trying to win this puck back, and they do. They get it to Sointu, and he's only got one defenseman ahead of him. And the Steelers will rush up and join the play. He gets it across, and Latal couldn't quite put it in. Great job by Latal. He gained a one zone with the speed that he possesses to get up there to make that two on one. Ellaby sends the shot through and swallowed whole by Lubsky. And the Steelers have had a better couple of shifts. Yeah, that's a lot better from the Sheffield Steelers. Obviously, good hard work from the defensive zone makes a good play to come out the zone. And here you see. It. Oh, the puck actually goes off the uh, the forward up top there, and it sort of butterflies towards the netminder, and he just gets his arm back down. And Good opportunity there for the defenseman getting the shot away. Still waiting for his first Sheffield Steelers goal, Keaton Ellaby. Saksu Danielson sends it through, and again into the glove of Lubsky. Again, a good job by the Sheffield Steelers to, uh, to win the draw and get the puck cycled towards the net. They want it. Obviously, see if they can put some pressure on. You got Mosey out in front of the net, so anything that bounces in and around, you know, very quick hands down around the low low area there, maybe an opportunity to pop one one left side or right side if it comes out to him. Warning for Armstrong on the faceoff up against Razvadovsky. He still sits there on the dot. Who's going to get to it first? It will be Gommel, and they will break out. Speeding into the offensive zone is Ravenko. Trying to stick handle in front. Bruss makes the save with the pad and he had to make a follow-up stop as well. Steelers need to get this one away. It's 
not sliding very easily at the moment and they can't get it across the line. And the pressure's starting to build again. Ravenko. Mosey trying to backhand it away, didn't get enough on it. Yeah. Knocked down and kept in by Razvodovsky. Needed to go up the boards with that one. Backhand flip pass through the middle of the ice. Not a well-advised play, that's for sure. Saksu Danielson gets it forward to Armstrong. They'll switch it to the near side. A little bit of room for De Luca. Trying to dangle inside. Oh, and he couldn't get his shot away. The space was closed off in a hurry. Armstrong hunting. Puck sent in deep. Only one four checker in after it at the moment. Doing a pretty good job, Dadanoff. Putting the pressure on, but the Steelers resisted and carry it out into neutral ice. Not able to go much further than the blue line. They'll reset with Valdix. Graham couldn't keep hold of it. Ivanshikov. Dadanoff forward. Connell into the offensive zone. Jonathan Phillips lifts the stick and prevents the shot being taken by Karabanov. Dadanoff. Ivanshikov sends it through, looking for a tip. Oh, and he nearly got one. Right in from the outside, and it takes a bounce and comes to the near wall. Slap shot incoming, and Bruster's has got traffic in front of him. He saved it, but the puck is loose, and it's put in at the back post. Gommel have the opening goal. It's Suslow. Seven minutes in, and Gommel are in front. Yes, it's a shot from the blue line. Barry Bruss doesn't quite get a hold of the rebound. And a little battle out in front of the net, a little bit of a stick battle that Davy Phillips can't quite get to for the rebound and gets slotted in behind the net binder, Barry Brust. A little bit of pressure, we saw it was building, you said it was building as well, that little bit of pressure, but a shot from the blue line that Brust doesn't parry away to the corner and it kind of bounces just to the side of the net and it gets worked back in and unfortunately goes in the back of the net. You'll see it on the replay here, Alex Graham just playing a little bit of help and cover there and the shot comes through actually goes off Davy Phillips there which actually I think makes uh, makes it harder for Bruss to make the save he does make the initial save but then he's off balance and can't push back across to get the other side it was Dmitry Ivanchikov providing the screen and Nikolai Suslo providing the finish so the Steelers find themselves behind not the position they've been in this tournament so far looking for an instant response puck sent towards Sointu back out into neutral ice the Steelers just need a good couple of positive shifts to lift the mood again always deflating to fall behind in a game can't afford to get down on themselves Hodgman well that one took a strange bounce out in front nearly favourable for the Steelers not quite in the end Gommel are back across the line they'll send it in on Bruss there's a wraparound opportunity was there no taken away then the slap shot comes in and that one has been blocked rather painfully by Hodgman. Steelers are scrambling a little bit at the moment. And they're grateful to see the puck go back down the boards and out of the zone. Yeah, Hodgman doing a great job on the block. But now here's an opportunity. It's Armstrong. Oh, and it wasn't far away. Armstrong gets it back. Help from Mosey. Trying to turn away from Voronov, still Mosey. Back out into the slot, it's past Armstrong and out. Todd steps forward. Meets Kuzhev in the corner, loses out. Puck comes to Kuzhikov. And sacks through Danielson and Mosey. And the, the Steelers had a couple of opportunities within quick succession. Yeah, John Armstrong doing have a great opportunity there. That would have been a perfect response, obviously, fairly quick after the opening goal, but great to see Sheffield jumping on the, uh, on the attack. Stick handling of Ravenko, bringing it forward, trying to get it back towards Ambrosiecik. Steelers defend it well. Todd checks his options, goes off the wall to Jonathan Phillips. Graham and Valdix in support. It's off the netminder, it might come towards Graham and the sliding poke check was just enough. Keep him away from the puck and now Ambrosiecik accelerating down the right wing. David Phillips gets his body in the way and helps the puck on. Nice nice read by Davy Phillips there. Seeing the puck get dumped by. Was already on the way to the corner there to help his defence partner out. Oh, David Phillips run over. Big hit from Pavel Razvodovsky.
Approaching the halfway point of this first period, Gommel leading by a goal to nil. Scored by Nikolai Suslo, assisted by Dmitry Ivanchikov. Even strength at the seven minute mark. No penalties so far in this game. Buck in the corner with Karabanov. He loses out. Hodgman. There's been no ill effects from the little bump he took earlier. That wasn't quite the pass that Latal had in mind. And he loses the race and yet another icing call against the Steelers. Yeah, Sheffield doing a, doing a good job. Obviously the, the goal against, but they had their opportunities as well to get back in this game. Nice little play here. Good pass across. You see Armstrong there. Refer whether that hits the post or not, referee's waving something off there. So whether he heard a, a ding or not, maybe he actually beats the netminder. It's tough to see on, on that replay, but nice cross eye sauce pass right onto the tape of Armstrong in full stride and gets a great shot away. Stick battle. Trying to win possession of the puck, it'll squirt out in the Steelers' favour. And they'll look forward to Soin to again, it's out of his reach. The Steelers passing from back to front hasn't been great so far in this one. Boyko will reach this one. He loses out in the corner and the Steelers will get back onto it through Schultz. Goes D to D, Ellaby forward. Steelers across the line. Still in possession. Keaton Ellaby again. Oh, and then not finding Armstrong. Steelers aren't quite in rhythm just yet. Just getting harassed a little bit more, obviously. A little bit more pressure making that first pass, and that's not what you want. Gommel moving in dangerously. Backhand shot, save made by Brust. The puck is still live, and it goes to the corner after he made the save from Kirill Bovin. That one takes a hop and goes down the ice, and the Steelers, again, grateful to catch a momentary breather. Just got to be careful on their back check. They're over back checking a little bit and leaving the high guy open, which allowed the opportunity to come in there. Ravenko sends it towards goal. It's wide on the short side. Possession, though, still with the Belarusians. Vanchikov takes the shot. It was blocked. Valdix gets onto it, and he'll be able to clear for the Steelers. Quickly turn back over though and back the other way come Gommel. Rosvodovsky stood up and that allows Sakshu Danielson to move the play to the near side. It's all a little bit tight for Todd. Let's get it on towards Valdix and the puck stays in the offensive zone momentarily. The Steelers not having a lot of joy so far in this one. Dadanoff sends it on to the outside of the goal. Bounces back for David Phillips. He goes off the wall and out. And Graham is able to corral it. Graham has won it. Plays it across. The one-timer comes in and the save made by Lubsky. That nice was better play. from the Steelers. Yeah, nice little play by Alex Graham. Spotting the player wide open for a one-timer. David Phillips went for a huge hit and missed. And Barry Bruss makes the save behind him. Yeah, Barry Bruss made a couple of good saves just earlier on that as well. Coming out of the corner. Had to make one and two. And again, Phillips going for the hit. This gets popped around behind him. And... Rust is there to bury him out, but to bail him out. But yeah, Alex Graham, nice little play. You know, wasn't wasn't uh, panicked on the puck at all whatsoever. You know, he made the right smart move and, and fed it across and a nice little one-time effort. Boyko with the shot and Brust again with a little bit of a pad to help that on its way. Another icing call against the Steelers. Must be four or five already in this first period. Yeah, I think so. But I think it, it, it's not been too uh, too harmful to him at all. I think it, it's, it's relieving a little bit of pressure maybe. But obviously you don't want to continue doing it. But the, the one good thing that is happening is they're winning the face-offs. They're not, they're not losing too many draws cleanly. Everything's fairly uh, fairly even or better. You know, they are getting a couple opportunities against them. But uh, Brust is there to, to, to bail them out and hold them out. Kovalev to Boyko. That didn't quite work out as he intended. Steelers send it down the ice. No icing this time, though. Soing to and Latal in on the forecheck. Gom will play it out, but it'll be straight back to Keaton Ellaby. Sam Jones. Pass forward, didn't find its target, and Gommel 
Quick to enter the offensive zone on the counter. Lattle breaks the play up. No one ahead for Hodgman to pass to. He's going to carry it himself. And still goes Justin Hodgman. Needs a little bit of support, or maybe he can do it all himself. Good hard-working play, that. Definitely to retrieve the puck and get that from behind the net. Exchanges passes with DeLuca. Plays it out to the top of the slot, and it didn't quite find Mosey. Saxu Danielson sees his shot bounce back. He gets it once more. That one bounces off Boyko. Mosey trying to get onto it. The puck was bouncing, and he swung right over the top of it. And now DeLuca. It's a good shift from the Steelers. Armstrong sending it back door Puck is sitting in the crease can DeLuca jam it in he can't quite his hands went up he thought he might have done for a moment but it did stay out it did look, did look that there was something in the back of the net but obviously that had rolled by but as you said this is a fantastic hard working shift down low shows Gommel is, is susceptible to something a bit of pressure Armstrong snaps it really good kick save from Maxim Lubsky the Steelers' best spell of pressure as DeLuca spins and shoots, and another save from Lubsky. This is more like it from Aaron Fox's team. Can they make the pressure count? It's Todd. Still Dane Todd. He'll go up the wall. Steelers making a couple of changes on the fly, trying to get fresh skaters out there, but the Gommel players have been out for a while now. Todd sent it towards goal. It didn't get a tip from Armstrong. Back to the blue line. Todd trying to send it into traffic and it bounces out off a gommel leg and they'll be able to get a couple of quick changes in as Graham enters the offensive zone. Trying to go towards Jonathan Phillips. He was tied up by Magaletsky. Schulz. Back into the corner. Jonathan Phillips. Andreas Valdix. Into the final five minutes of the first period. Steelers trailing by a goal. Valdix trying to get it across. Jonathan Phillips had a whack at it, but it was covered up by Lubsky, who was the only Gommel player who could get anything on the puck on that shift. Yeah, Gommel in trouble here in the last minute and a half, two minutes, nearly full time in their own zone, just trying to defend as best they can. Sheffield getting a couple of good opportunities out of it here. Even this little feather pass out in front. Look at a bobble around in there. That bobble's out. This side, Jonathan Phillips is there as he takes a little chop at the uh, the loose puck, but fantastic work, good cycle plays, good pressure. And another backdoor play there, you see it just sitting in there for Mosey, and right there, looks, <laughs> it looks like the Lucas sees maybe the back of the, the bottom of the stick go over the line and thinks that's the puck, but again, fantastic work from those two shifts that were just out. Dadanoff. Karabanov. Gets the puck in deep. It'll come round though to the near side corner. We got a penalty called on the play here. Yeah, I think Looks it's going to be. We have. Yeah, it might be a hook as the player was coming across the blue line there. Just gets stuck underneath, a little bit on the defensive side, a little bit away from the play, but wasn't uh, in in a, in a scoring area. So ain't you sitting down for two minutes? Not what Sheffield wanted with all the pressure. They've just built up a little bit of momentum going into. Uh, the last uh, quarter of this period, under under five to go, four four twenty. So Sheffield penalty going to have to come up big here. You don't want to be letting this stretch out just before the intermission. Steelers penalty kill eight for eight in this tournament so far. Oh, and the shot straight from the pass didn't quite work out for Ambrosiewicz. He got into a good position, didn't time his shot quite right. Ravenko out to the far side. Five on four in favour of Gommel. David Phillips can't get that one away. Chases on. Can the Steelers poke this away? They can through Jonathan Phillips. Excellent work by both Phillips there to get the play out of the zone as best they could. Chases on for Razvodovsky. Gommel get onto it and will settle it down. Voronov. Ambrosiewicz. Back out with Ravenko. Voronov's trying to provide the screen. Now he pulls away into the slot. Can they follow one through Brust? They can't quite. He makes the stop. Churliaev sends it down low. And Brashechik sends it right across. Faked the shot and played the pass instead. And there wasn't a follow-up shot coming in. Yeah, 
Very fortunate. Brusted played the uh, the shot big time and was sliding across. If that gets a touch from the high guy in the middle of the ice there, would have been a wide open net. But good job by Sheffield defenders there just to nullify that stick. Grigorenko, good pass across. The shot comes in and Brust waved a glove at it and just tips it on its way. Chases on for Lattle. He'll get to it. He'll backhand it down the ice and precious seconds tick away. Excellent speed there by Lattal. Needing exactly what he needed to do. Get over there, get the puck out the ice here, down the ice. He, you know, he takes his time there and Gommel maybe get the opportunity to hold it in as, as DeLuca finishes his check. DeLuca backhands it away. Not often a regular part of the Steelers' penalty kill, but all hands on deck right now. Resources no, are tight. Definitely, for you know, for sure they have to do it. You know, at, at the end of the day, you know, Anthony DeLuca's got good hands and, and he's a good solid body, so if he can get in the way of pucks and he can use that body down the boards, it helps out on the penalty kill. And it's a successful penalty kill, and out of the box and into the play is Sointu. And on for Hodgman. Spinning one way and then the other. Shot comes through, save made. Lubski has had work to do in this game, but as we enter the final two minutes of the first period, it's Gommel on the attack again. And a backhanded across and well covered by the Steelers to deny Bovin. Bovin has it back again. Trying to play it out front. Jones with the block this time. Still Bovin. Trying to get it behind the goal for Kuzhev. And will win the battle. And they have possession in the offensive zone. Kovalov. Switch it across to the far side. Magalecki. Big oh, hit. Jones coming in with the hit. Looks a little high, but the officials are happy with it. Sam Jones certainly was. Sign two. Under pressure, he's got white shirts either side of him. Jones helps out. Schultz and Armstrong there as well. Steelers pinned in their own zone at the moment. Sushko with the shot, saved by Bruss, and he has to react as the puck fell in front of him. He was there before Razvodovsky. Yeah, Barry Bruss doing a pretty good job on that, tracking the puck from south to north, let's say, and, and uh, comes across the, uh, the, the crease there, knows there's nothing there. You can see him fight it off with his shoulder, but does a great job battling out in front, and then that's how you clear somebody out from a rebound. Just wants Suslow to get square on the face-off. He's going to try and jam this one in under Brust. And the puck sent across goal by Dadanoff. Now Mosey, if the Steelers got something in them late, late in the first. Oh, Valdix skated on without the puck. Back the other way comes Karabanov. Suslow looking back door, that got broken up. Mosey. Pass forward intended for Phillips, gets deflected away from him. Saksu Danielson. Now the Steelers venture into the offensive zone. Angle is tight and the shot is on goal and it forces Lubsky to save and hold. Yeah, just what Sheffield needs, a little bit of pressure breaker. Gommel doing a pretty good job. They're very, very quick from, uh, from defense to offense on their regroup. So they've been doing a pretty good job of that so far. Catching Sheffield a little bit on the back foot, but shot from the outside, a little speculative shot, but the desired effect, I think, is that offensive zone face-off, which gives Sheffield the opportunity here to get that chance and shot on net. Whistle on the face-off, so we'll reset and go again. And the Steelers spin and shoot. Well, they did try and send it towards goal. It got blocked and cleared away. Now maybe one last rush for Gommel. David Phillips in tight in the corner. The Steelers will end the period in possession of the puck, but it is a period uh, they have lost by a goal to nil. It's the first time they've been behind in the tournament. The Belarusians have come out hard. They force the Steelers onto the back foot, and they lead through the only goal of the game scored by Nikolai Suslo at the seven-minute mark. So we'll take a look back at the best moments of the first period, and... The Steelers have had some periods throughout this tournament where they've been on the back foot, but this looked like it was a little more than that. There was uh, 
real pressure being applied and there was a lot more danger than we've seen in other games. Yeah, a lot more pressure being being applied. I mean, the Alberg game, they they, uh, they, they passed the puck very well in Sheffield's zone where, where here Gommel are actually taking the opportunities towards the net as we see a couple of opportunities for Sheffield themselves. But, you know, Sheffield do a, do a pretty good job with what they're doing as we're going to have a little look at the goal here. As it comes through, you, you'll watch. If, if Alex Graham just plays a little bit more to the defensive side there, maybe the shot doesn't come through. But Davy Phillips, you know, goes for the goes for the block. Two players get in behind him. He gets just enough of it to throw off uh, off his netminder as well, and, and Bruss can't recover. So a couple of little bit of half mistakes, but not real mistakes, really. It, it's it, it's something a young player can, can learn from. It's nothing that's really his fault. We see Hodgman take one there for the team on, on, a, on a wraparound opportunity, and from there, he struggled again, trying to uh, get the puck out of the uh, defensive zone. But John Armstrong here, like I said, I'm not sure if this hits the post or not, because referee right there is is, is waving off sing signal. So maybe he does see something. But some great great effort here for about two solid minutes. Absolutely jammed Gommel back in the uh, defensive zone, and there's some good opportunities for Sheffield to tie this game. Sealers did have their chances, but they sort of came in condensed periods. It wasn't that the chances came regularly. They came in uh, within a matter of seconds of yeah, each they other. Came, they came in a bit of a flourish, as you see. <laughs> a good switch off there, and uh, Sam Jones is railroading his guy going behind the net. So uh, you are right. They, they, it wasn't sort of a wave and then a shot and a, a wave back the other way and then a wave and a shot. It was it was sort of a pressure situation, a one shot, two shots, another pressure situation, another couple of shots, and then Gommel would go back and have that little bit of deeper offensive zone pressure as well. It wasn't like a, a racetrack game where it was going up and down the ice. It was it was, it was was definitely some, some, uh, some bounces through the neutral zone for both teams. Um, Sheffield maybe on the on the defensive a little bit more, maybe 60-40 in the period. Uh, obviously a, a power play uh, opportunity against them. Penalty kill did very very well to uh, to take that in stride and and not let the game get stretched out with uh, with under five minutes to go in the period. Any reason for Aaron Fox to be particularly concerned at this stage? I don't think so. I think I think Barry Bruss is doing pretty well in the net. He's moving well. He's seeing the puck. You know, guys are clearing players out in front of the net. The defensive coverage is pretty pretty solid. One or two giveaways that that you know. Maybe didn't happen yesterday, but again, it's more pressure in, in situations today. The the the, the Belarusians look like they're a better skating team. They're moving the puck a little bit more, tape to tape passes. So you are going to be under that little bit more pressure. So overall, I don't think he's going to be too unhappy with that one nil. Well, that's it for the first 20 minutes. We're going to take a short break here in the studio. We'll be back with you very soon for the second period. The Steelers trail by a goal after 20 minutes. In the 1740s, Benjamin Huntsman moved to Sheffield and developed the process of making crucible steel. In doing so, he turned a small town into a major world city, a steel city. As the years rolled by, it was sport that gave the city its new identity, from football to snooker. And then, 30 years ago, September 26, 1991, a new era began. Sport forged in steel as the Sheffield Steelers played their first ever game. What followed were moments, memories and trophies. Today, the Steelers raised banner number 28 in honour of that famous Challenge Cup win in Wales 18 months ago. As we celebrate the anniversary of the Steelers' inaugural game and their most recent piece of silverware, a new league season begins. Sheffield take on Cardiff and the next chapter of Steelers hockey can start to be written. Let's raise the banner! Banner 28 is finally heading skywards. Many of the players from that famous day are still here today and soaking in the moment. But we should also remember the contributions of that squad who've since moved on. Aaron Brocklehurst, Yannick Kolomainen, Will Curlin, Alex Graham, James Bettauer, Nikolai Lemchikov, Josef Rabel, Lucas Sandstrom, Thomas Duber, Michael Davies and Marek Tronsinski. Dixon wins the face-off. Crandall's shot was blocked. Still Devils' possession. Out to Richardson. That one didn't reach its target, and the Steelers will try and counter into the space he left behind. Steelers get to it. Centering feed saved by Carew to deny Robert Dowd the opener. The Steelers are all about speed this season. And you see it here. Alexuk flying down the wing. It's a really good stop up high. 
See, let's poke it down the boards, and again the chase is on, they'll get it. It's a two on one. De Luca plays it across, and the touch couldn't be applied by Valorand. Richardson was back to make life as difficult as possible, and he did a pretty good job. Devils look for the one timer, and that one is up and away. And again, the Steelers will look to transition. Dowd plays it inside. Four rush across the line for the Steelers, and when they take it no further, they've now got to hustle back. And the Devils the other way with Reed. Still with the Devils. Lewis calls for it and gets it at the blue line. Sends it through traffic. It's sitting there at the side of the goal, and it's popped just wide. That might be the best Devils chance so far. Put carried over the line by Reed. Now around for Dixon. Devils try and bring it in front. Shot on goal and turned aside by Stojanovic. Grabbed by Crandall. Can't stick handle his way through the circle and the Steelers happy to clear. Big slap shot and that's the opener. It's a power play goal, hammered in by Brody Reed. Great position for that one-timer. And it flew past Stojanovic. That will deflect back to centre ice. That was going to slap this in from a long way out. Easy enough for Stojanovic to deal with. Now Valorand. A little bit far ahead of where Connolly really wanted it. Valorand skates right past it. So they haven't quite got into their rhythm yet in the early stages of this second period. Stojanovic called upon to make a save. And now the Steelers will with a quick counter. Connolly tries to play the pass across and it's a simple tap-in. It's Keaton Ellaby. It's the Steelers' equaliser. Just under two minutes gone in the second period, and it was Connolly the provider, waiting for Ellaby to join the rush. Just the start that the Steelers needed to the second. Puck is tipped forward, it hits high on the glass, but stays in. Mosey, a white shirt to either side of him, he gets it to Connolly, and he goes off the boards and out. Steelers using Mosey as a forward on this shift, and Connolly has won it, and he's fed it forward for Jonathan Phillips, and it's there! The Steelers have taken the lead! A turnaround in the early stages of the second period. Phillips burst forward, and Mosey had the simplest of finishes. The speed of Jonathan Phillips gets in between O'Connor and Mickelson, and no one was keeping an eye on Evan Mosey. Manchester yesterday, and he scored again tonight. Jonathan Phillips on the game sheet is the only forward on the Steelers' fourth line. Save made by Stojanovic, he doesn't realise where it is, it's still live. Here goes Connolly, Steelers are flying right now, and Carruth makes the stop. But here's a breakaway the other way. Chance for the Devils to level it, and they do! It's Reed. And that's really changed the mood in this building. Clinical break, and a deadly finish under Stojanovic. It's a great lead pass. It was a 2-0 with Dixon in support as well, but Reed fired it along the ice and in. Helps the pass off. Picks it back up. Moves it to this near side. Register. Devils moving it around nicely. Waiting for the time right to unleash the shot. Reed didn't see what he wanted. Crandall. Working it back up to the blue line. Now to the near side. Register. One timer comes in and goes in. Looks like he got a touch from Dixon. 
a topsy-turvy game that now the Devils lead again. Two power play goals on the night for the Cardiff Devils. And the decisive touch provided by Stephen Dixon. Steelers try and work it out of the zone down the wall. The Devils don't let them. It's hard trying to be physical. Hodgman in to help. Devils have it on their stick. They'll send it in deep. Todd. Steelers now moving forward. Into the offensive zone with Hodgman. Tries to play a backhand pass once and then twice, and neither of them got through. Waller hits the deck. And the attentions of Eberly. He was maybe hoping for a tripping call, but didn't get one. And he gets it now. There's an opportunity here. Reed has it. Back for Waller. The touch and it's in. Devils have their fourth. And the Steelers have got a big hill to climb now. Reed sends it goalwards. Not sure if it catches a touch from Waller. If it doesn't, it'll be a hat trick goal. Duggan helps it away. The Steelers have got to be careful. They've got too many men on the ice, so they're not going to play it. Just wait till it's all settled down. They got called for too many men earlier, and it cost them a power play goal. Backhand shot onto the outside of the net. That's going to be a penalty. That's O'Connor. Interference on Eberly. And the Steelers will have a power play, and O'Connor has words for Eberly. And Eberly has words for O'Connor. Connor smiling, his team are in front. Another opportunity. And you can see the hit coming in with the puck a long way in front of them. Power play opportunity number four of the game for the Steelers. Big opportunity to get back in the game! And Martin Latal has done just that. It's a wicked slap shot. And with 6.14 to go, it's very much game on now. O'Connor's penalty, a costly one. Latal's slap shot had power and accuracy. Todd, trying to skate away from Waller. He moves so well. He's gained the steal as the offensive zone. Plays it across the crease. It'll come to Armstrong on the far side. Back around behind the goal, but there's no one in the right wing corner for the Steelers. That'll allow the Devils a chance to get onto it, but a little slip has got Todd into possession. Latal. Still with Latal. Shoots through the crowd and it's bounced in! That's the sort of comeback that we're hoping the Sheffield Steelers will be able to produce in this game. They are 1-0 down to HK Gommel of Belarus through 20 minutes. We're getting ready for the start of the second period. If you do want to watch the rest of the highlights from that game against the Cardiff Devils, as with all the Steelers highlights, they're on our YouTube page. One little bit of housekeeping then before we get the second period underway. There have been an additional assist added to Gommel's goal. We know that it was scored by Nikolai Suslow and an assist for Dmitry Ivanchikov. They've added an assist to number 21, Yevgeny Dadanov. 18 from 9 and 21, even strength at 7 minutes. Shot count was pretty even, 14 by the Steelers and 15 by Gommel through the first period. We're even strength as we're scheduled to get back underway. Everyone's in position. And possession won by the Steelers from Hodgman's draw. Such a big part of his game. It's something that he really enjoys. He's been very good at it so far in the early stages of his Steelers career. Jones sends this one forward. Put played around by Lubsky. Steelers will certainly want to have more territory in the second period than they did in the first. Yeah, a little bit more puck possession, I think, is what they want. I mean, they had, uh, as we said in the intermission, they had that little bit of a flurry here and there, but 
be nice to be a little bit more opportunistic and, and, and have that puck and, and stretch out Gommel a little bit more. Shot in on Brust is comfortably dealt with. Vanchikov flicking it towards goal. Ellaby, like he might have been caught high by Dad and off. Play continues. Ellaby's just going to press him into the wall and win the puck back for his team. De Luca across the line, waiting for support. Tries to send it towards the goal. There are plenty of white shirts between him and the netminder. Would have liked him to see him just take that a little bit lower if possible. A little bit tough spot there to do, to do anything. Two on three. A little bit lower down gives you a chance, a little bit of, a, of an opportunity to get that third man who was changing to get him back on the ice. It's actually Danielson's pass forward, doesn't find Armstrong. Back forward goes Voronov. Mosey hunting down after Dadanov. There's no way forward for Gommel at the moment. They'll reset and try again. Skating into the zone of Grigorenko. Steelers play it straight back out, but they'll stay in just on the line. Gommel got to it in time. Now the pressure on Sakshu Danielson. Well, this is where you can see the, the, the puck pursuit from, from Gommel. It's very, very effective. They're very, very quick getting from one side of the ice to the other, and they work very hard to try to put that pressure on the Steelers defenseman. Good hit by Todd in on Sekirin. Again, possession quickly finds its way back to the team in white. Although they're going to give this one away as they're at the end of their shift. Need to go and get some fresh skaters on. That'll allow Todd a little bit of room to move out and across the red line. Jonathan Phillips into the corner with Chilyaev. Chilyaev wins out. The Steelers get it back in neutral ice and a chance to look down and they'll see Jonathan Phillips again. Again around the boards. Graham is charging hard, but it took a kick off the boards and towards the netminder. And the Steelers will have to go back and build once more. But they'll find it a little bit easier because they're going to get called icing on that play, which gets them into the offensive zone. Yeah, I think it's Gommel. This is it's pretty much a, a rarity at the minute for them to ice the puck. They've done a pretty good job making sure that the uh, the play doesn't get iced and, and they get a touch on the puck. They're quite happy to regroup very, very quickly. We've seen it uh, time and time again. They do that quick little D to D and they're up the, out the other side and they're putting pressure back in on Sheffield. So Sheffield have to be very, very careful. They have to get up to the blue line as fast as they can to close that gap as to not give them too much in the, in the high areas. David Phillips. Feathers one through. He tried to get a deflection from Latal. It was a nice idea and wasn't far away from working. Zhukovsky leads the charge. Back the other way. Bovin held up. Steelers get it back. A little bit of extra space for Hodgman as he enters the zone. Plays it across. David Phillips found himself attacking the slot. Not a position that you often see him in. Usually hanging back to blast a one-timer, but... Steelers will have it through Latal. A bit short of support at the moment. Gommel will be able to break free. Revenko. Touched onto the near side and carried in by Razvodovsky. Chase on for Mosey, got a couple for company. And they just ease him out of the play. Steelers have not been able to get any odd man rushes really going so far in this game. The defence from Gommel has been very disciplined. Steelers defence without a stick there as Jones didn't realise and made a pass to his partner, but that one touch at the beginning of the, the game with the football has paid off. Todd. Goes D to D. Fed forward, tipped on. Mosey will continue the chase. Back to it, though, is Voronov. Voronov's going to bring it out of defence. Carried it a long way and sends it in on Brust. There'll be a follow-up shot that comes in as well from Suslow. Brust made two saves in quick succession. Smart play there by Suslow, trying to catch Brust on the uh, little bit off balance as the puck actually went quite a distance to the, uh, to, the, to the sideboards away from the goal, but he just fires one back, and Brust had to be very, very careful and get to the post quick enough to get in the way of it. Kudratiev against Armstrong on the face-off. Armstrong gets it back to Sakshu Danielson. Steelers want to work their way down the ice, but that one has been deflected up and onto the Gommel bench. A little bit of a split line there. He had DeLuca and Armstrong and Alex Graham out there. As they make the change now to get the lines back to where they want to be, but another important face-off here for Andreas Valdix. Needs to get that puck to the side or in the corner. Nothing clean away. It does just enough. 
but Gommel quickly get back onto it. They'll take a shot on, it was blocked by Todd. Comes straight back to Grigorenko. He's under pressure and Jonathan Phillips gets it and he'll feed it forward looking for Graham and it's under his stick and down the ice for another icing whistle. And it's little things like that that just keep forcing the Steelers backwards. Yeah, just a little unfortunate. Alex Graham doesn't quite get a hold of that, whether it just goes uh, a, a too quick a pass or Jonathan Phillips just leads him a little bit, but it goes just under as they get their line change. Gommel to get fresh legs. Outing on Sheffield third line, but again, Baldix needs to do something important here on the draw. Nothing clean lost. That's the important thing. Puck kept in the zone by Magaletsky. The shot comes through on Brust, and he has to hold on, and the traffic was starting to close in. Yeah, Todd doing a pretty good job there, just boxing his man out, and Brust being able to see all of the puck. You see him just having a little bit of a dance there with his legs, but not too much traffic out in front. You can see from that where it's, it's stopped on us, and then there he's going to see that all the way. A little, a little fortunate there that uh, Danielson doesn't get a hold of that and just top it down a little bit and deflect it. Schultz, long pass forward, intercepted. Steelers trying to hit the lead man up the middle. Those long passes haven't worked out so far in this game. I feel like they're going to keep trying because you know there's a great chance on the end of one if they do hit. Well, they do. There, there, is a, there is a lane there. It's just a matter of getting in the right spot at the right time and hitting the player in stride. Schultz feeds it forward. Sointu in the corner. Back with Schultz. David Phillips with that big shot, and then Hodgman at the side of the goal trying to force one through. Bovin across the red line, takes the aerial route. David Phillips back to it, doesn't get much on it. Situation recovered, though, by the Steelers. Skating away is Armstrong. Doesn't get any further than the red line, though, and it's turned over. Voronov skates it in and shoots straight into the chest of Barry Brust. Yeah, Barry Brust more than ready for that shot. You can see him, he was... Itching to make the save, his feet were properly set, nice top of the circle, you see it here. You watch him, he's, he's ready for this, ain't nothing going, he's halfway down, there's no way that that's going to go five hole or anything, his big body just controls the rebound nicely as well. So Razvodovsky ready to take the face off, Ravenko is waiting for a quick one-timer if he can draw it back to him. A little pause and a reset. We are ready to drop the puck. Armstrong did a good job at tying his man up, winning possession back for his team. The Steelers do get it out of the zone. Gommel straight back across the line, though. They'll lose out this time. Armstrong able to clear it as far as Mosey. Inside for DeLuca. He can shoot from there, and he does, and it's saved by Lubsky. Yeah, Lubsky doing again. You see Mosey driving the net, doing what he needs to do, an early pass, and DeLuca getting the shot away, but he doesn't wait to see what's happening. He gets himself to the net in case there is a bit of a rebound there. A little bit speculative to go, but it's exactly what you want to do. You want to get that puck towards the net and see if you can get that rebound. Anybody driving the net gets any sort of opportunity whatsoever to get that play away. Officials continue to be unhappy with the way the Steelers and Armstrong in particular are setting up on the face-offs. Yeah, drop the puck, let's get going. Quit wasting time. <laughs> Sorry. Sat in the stands at many hockey games over the years, never once heard a fan say, hey, the centre's not square. Exactly, just get her going. If the other, if the the other centre's not square as well, drop it and see who wins. Shot from Jones, got through and just went wide. with Jones loves to be a part of the offense if he can and he's carried this well on a turn away from trouble and just lost the handle on the puck now he's got to hustle back into his defensive position Armstrong preventing Suslow carrying it into the zone there's a delayed offside here on Gommel they've got to retreat and back away oh then the Steelers pass across the ice is intercepted Grigorenko option inside and they score it's Serekin, and it's 2-0, and this is not at all going to plan for the Steelers. No, not at that point in time. An errant pass going up the boards, turns into a 2-on-1. No one recognizes Armstrong, nobody seems to recognize another player there. 
Although Bus Bus does come out to try to challenge it, his glove is down and gotta love those toe curves to be able to get the puck up in a hurry, and that's exactly what he did. Glove was down as he follows through. He uses the toe of the blade to put it up into the roof of the net. And under 14 to go. We're down by two here in period two. Ivan Serekin, 20 years old and a goal scorer in this game. It's a 2-0 lead for HK Gommel of Belarus against the Sheffield Steelers. As it stands, the Steelers are still OK. But the safety net is starting to be pulled away from under them. Remember, even if the Steelers do lose by three, it still needs another result this evening to go against them for them to be out. There's plenty of time left in this game, and the Steelers are far from out of it, down by two. I think it's completely fair to say they've been second best for most parts of this game. David Phillips bounces one off the boards. Schultz, defenseman combining deep up the ice. Now Jonathan Phillips. Graham, Jones. Schultz. Phillips under pressure. Hodgman in there. Buck is cleared only as far as Ellaby. He'll shoot. That gets blocked before it gets to the netminder. Steelers fans still in good voice. They still believe. You get the feeling the Steelers need that little bit of a lift. They'll need a little bit of a spark here. Something going forward again. Whether it's a couple of possessions down deep with a couple opportunities. They need to try to get a little bit more instead of one and done. A little bit more pressure, whether it just be something towards the net, but. Donald have done a pretty good job. He's seen some block shots today. The latest one just happening there off Ellerby, I think it was. So, got to get pucks through to the net somehow. We'll see what we can happen off the face off here. Puck still sitting there. It's Gommel who emerged with it. Here's Grigorenko. Shot in on Bruston. He'll hold on. Grigorenko got the assist on Serekin's goal, 15 from 38, even strength at 26-41. Yeah, you see here, center lane drive again, what you want, get the puck to the net, maybe looking off the pads, a little bit too high, Barry Bruss holds it down, but stop in front of the net, third guy coming through too, if there's a higher rebound, so... Positionally pretty good play there from Gommel. Ravenko trying to send it towards goal. It bounces back to him. And then out front. Oh, and the shot is well blocked. Steelers' bodies on the line. Latal can't take the puck with him and straight back the other way. Ravenko right across the face of goal. Another one in on Brust. It's sitting there loose. Opportunity for Gommel. They'll slate the shot through. And again, it's up into the chest of Brust. This time from Voronov. Yeah, again, it, it starts with a turnover outside. And all this pressure again comes from that turnover. So Sheffield again need to be a little bit careful. I mean, again, nobody there to unsight Brust as Todd goes down, maybe to try and block anything down low. But Brust is there again, takes it off the chest, and again, important that there's no rebounds built out. Dadanoff knocked off the puck, and the Steelers will get onto it, and there's room to accelerate into. Sent towards goal. Schultz trying to win the battle. He'll lose out and it'll be cleared away by Vanshikov. Yeah, Schultz really venturing forward, trying to be a, a catalyst on the offense. Something that he has more than enough ability to do. He loves to get up in the play. You've seen the skill level that he does have. He also has a pretty good engine in him to be able to go up and down the ice. So that's another bonus that they can do. So the more he can push play up the ice, the more it puts put, uh, pressure on the, the Gommel defense to have four players in and around in the offense. Steelers can't keep it in the zone, and Schultz has got to be careful here under pressure from Dadanoff, and he does well to keep possession of the puck under pressure. And now here's Mosey moving in and shooting, and the save was made by Lubsky. Made the chance happen all himself, Evan Mosey, with the speed down the right wing, then cutting behind the defenseman. Now icing against Gommel. I haven't seen Andreas Valdix for a while. He's 
I believe he's getting some equipment issues sorted out. It's uh, a big miss for the Steelers to be down to just eight forwards at the moment. It is, especially got lots of time left in this period. Hopefully they can get it flipped around pretty quick and running two centermen here between the three lines and Armstrong does a great job on the draw. Ellaby sent it through, was looking for a tip and it didn't get one. Armstrong. Suslow right with him. Phillips trying to help out. Latal out there also. Ellaby. Sointu. Nice play into the slot, but all his teammates were out on the perimeter. No one was attacking the net. Rush uses his paddle to knock that one away. And puck forced it back into neutral ice. The Steelers. Find themselves two goals down, approaching the midway point of their final group game here in the Continental Cup third round. We have a stoppage behind the plate. 10.05 remaining in the second. A little bit of a long shift there from John Armstrong. It looks as though Sheffield's going through the penalty box. I didn't catch anything there that we saw, but it's going to be Going to heading off again. Not what we want to see here. Down by two with half the game left to go. Obviously, plenty of time left in this game. It doesn't take much to uh, to uh, propel either team. We saw that yesterday with the quick goal that they got against them, Sheffield, to bring the game back and the more pressure applied. Penalty kill coming up. Got to be a big one here for Sheffield. Got to continue that roll and just shut players down. Shut the team down as best you can and clear that zone. Nine for nine in the tournament, the Sheffield Steelers. They really need to make it ten for ten. It's a slashing call on Sointu in the box for the second time today. Dadanoff. Pass was blocked. Gom will keep possession, though. The big slap shot comes in and it's turned aside by Brust to deny Chilev. Ambrosiecik. Five on four in favour of the Belarusians. Oh, the pass out into the slot and the sticks are all tangled up and the Steelers can't get it away. Sent goal was by Ravenko. It bounces back to him. Still Ravenko. Plays it across. The shot comes in. Oh, and that one came off the post, I think. Gomola putting the Steelers under a real pressure here. And there's another opportunity, and Brust makes the save, and it's cleared away by the Steelers, and they're hanging on right now. Yeah, Barry Brust tapping the post and then making a big save himself there to keep Sheffield in this. Survival, the order of the day for the Steelers, for at least the next 40 seconds. And the shot comes in, and Brust with the shoulder to take it over the top. Another one sent through and the tip from right in front and it is 3-0 and the Steelers are in real trouble now. It's the scoreline they can't afford today. Yeah, the, the warning bells were signaling there. It's unfortunate that they don't score and they put one off the post, but if you watch, the player gets on the offensive side here of Sixer Danielson right there. Stick down, all it is is a shot pass. His stick is up in the air. He's not doing anything pushing the player in the back. He needs to get his stick on stick and get that up in the air. Barry Brust. No chance at all on that on a little backdoor tip in play, but maybe a little bit of a tired play. But like I say, you got to tie the stick up. There's no point having your stick up in the air and pushing somebody in the back of the body. You got to get underneath that stick and lift it up and not give that opportunity. Igor Kalabanov with the five on four power play goal at 31 27. And as it stands, the Steelers need help from Riga later today. This is not enough for the Steelers to go through as things stand. So the goal was scored by Karabanov, the assist to Evgeny Grigorenko, his second assist of the game. Steelers 3-0 down, still plenty of time. But they've got to change the entire flow of this game. Is Mosey the man to do that? He'll drive forward, just poked away from him by Voronov. 
DeLuca trying to help win it back. Mosey again. Valdix is back out there for the Steelers. That's good news. DeLuca's centering feed is blocked. Hook sent out front. There's a penalty coming in here. I think DeLuca was being held or hooked. Indeed he was. The Steelers are going to get a power play. And a little bit of a sigh of relief. Something has gone the Steelers' way. Yeah, something positive here. DeLuca does a great job powering towards the net. And you just miss it there as... as Comes in out of shot, but the hook was there, just enough on the hand, but an opportunity comes back across for Mosey there, and as you see, the defenseman just gets a hold of the stick there and doesn't allow Mosey to get a piece of that. But now a huge opportunity here for Sheffield to get that back to that two-goal deficit. Even if it's two minutes of good possession and, and good opportunities, they need something here on the Gommel net to try to put this game back into perspective and back up where it needs to be for them. Steelers scored on their last power play, albeit that was yesterday. They were 0 for 8 before that, 1 for 9 now on the tournament following that Jonathan Phillips tip in. And he's out on the ice, but Brust has got to make a save at the other end. Penalty. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, go on. So the penalty was called just for confirmation on Pavel Voronov, two minutes for hooking. Again, Barry Brust doing what he needs to do. You know, the shot and a rebound there. You know, the player that drops the puck, watch him cycle him 12 self towards the net. Barry Bruss bounces that out in front. He's on the forehand, walks around and puts it into the open net. So little things like that. Barry Bruss has been doing pretty well today. The, the, the puck possession, the puck control that he has in and around the net. He's not really bobbled too many that have been uh, unfortunate incidents. So big opportunity here. Sheffield need to get it back down 200 feet. Todd, five on four man advantage for the Steelers. Todd gains the zone. Phillips, pass just goes astray and possession turned over and Gommel just happy to slap it away. No icing when a team's short-handed, Bruss just waits for the puck to come out in front of the goal line so he can play it. Hodgman around. Latal gets past Soin to this power play, just hasn't got going for the Steelers yet and it could be worse here. There's a break in from Suslo and the save made by Brust. And the puck mishandled by Soin too. The Steelers are just not on it right now. They're really struggling at all ends of the ice. First minute of power play hasn't gone at all to plan. Maybe the second minute can. Well, it's not started well as Gommel get another clearance in. Gommel are doing a great job. They're really pressuring the puck there. DeLuca has no time and space to get that puck under control and forces it back that 200 feet, but Sheffield back on the attack again. DeLuca goes back to the point. They'll work it down low for Armstrong. Valdix, Mosey, DeLuca. That one gets blocked away. DeLuca can't stop it being cleared away down the ice. Russ can come and play this one. Final 10 seconds of power play time. Armstrong turns, feeds Mosey. He'll snap one in, it's over the top. Penalty has expired. We're back to five on five. And that really wasn't the power play that Aaron Fox was hoping for. No, needed a little bit more, more setup, but give Gommel a, a credit there. They really pushed, and another errant pass. Ravenko takes the shot on, and again, Bruss comes up big. Yeah, the end of the power play there, just a little bit tired on the passing. As that one's given away up the middle of the ice, and that's what created the uh, goal just before that. And Sheffield lucky not to give up maybe a penalty or a penalty shot on, on the diving breakaway that that, uh, that Brust had to come up on as well. It looked as though I think it was Todd that was looking for some help on the inside from his defensive partner, but it wasn't there, and the Gomo player was off to the races. Another false start on the face off, and Steelers continue to be frustrated with the linesman today. This time it's Hodgman. Razvodovsky does win the draw. Sent right across the face of goal. Gommel will get to it on the far side. Ellaby wins the puck back. Steelers just want to get this out if they can. It's trapped behind the goal at the moment. 
Now Jones has an opportunity, spins onto his forehand and plays the pass down the ice. Latal, good speed, he's putting the real pressure on Kovalev. The puck will come out of the zone on the far side. Jones flips it forward, blocked out of the zone. Good defensive work coming in from Voronov. Now Armstrong. Needs a little help there, Jonathan, a little bit quicker. Penalty coming up, we'll see what it's going to be. Going to be against Sheffield. Not what the Steelers need with under five to go here, second period. Lubsky on the bench for the extra skater, six on five. Until the Steelers get the puck back, or Com will score. Grigorenko. Feeds it forward and Gommel gain the offensive zone. Suslo. Feeds the pass across. The one time is coming in. No, it's played to the side of the goal. Bruss makes the save. The puck is live and the Steelers get to it. And the whistle will go. And now the two-minute minor can be called. And the Steelers heading shorthanded for the third time in this game. Yeah, a little bit of frustration showing up there as the puck gets thrown down the ice. And the referee just saying, oh, calm it down a little bit. But six on five, it's, it's Armstrong on on the penalty this time it was outnumbered on the other side and that was the, that was the problem if you watch Gomel when on the attack is nice little play Brust actually overslides again that puck comes back out in front and there's wide open nets all the way all around but Armstrong does a good hard work to get down the boards and then has no no support whatsoever and has to battle on and then I think it might have been was a little bit of a hook as the player skated away from him so he was one for two on the penalty kill so far in this game Gommel will move in and that shot goes just wide. Brust again aggressive coming out to play it. You don't want to be allowing that cut through the seam too often, especially on a forehand. We see uh, Valorant love to do that. Kudratsev takes the shot on, it's deflected wide. Chases on for Grigorenko, has to take it out of the zone. And he'll leave it for Kudratsev. Grigorenko again, trying to stick handle his way through. Ravenko. Still Ravenko. Plays it down low. Looking to get a pass across, and they're trying to feed it towards Karabanov. Taking up a good position again at the top of the crease. Yeah, but Barry Braster is, is reading it all the way. He stays tight to the post. and. Snatches it out with a glove. Good job by the Sheffield defenseman. Obviously, they're collapsing down and low, not allowing too much. But the problem when you collapse too low, you let the uh, opportunity to have those seams a little bit higher up. So, really, really difficult. Good movement by Gommel. You've got to give him credit. They've moved the puck very, very well on the power plays that they've had. They put Sheffield under a lot of pressure. Still one minute of the power play remaining. Puck is caught under the skates. Todd gets himself sorted out and clears it away down the ice. Excellent second effort there by Todd. As he said, battle his way through and get it, gets it up from underneath him and does enough to throw it down the ice as Mosey goes in for a chase to put a little bit of pressure to try and keep it the other way. Dadanoff. Long reach, just gets himself into the offensive zone, but again, Todd does a great job cleaning up. Shushko. That one's going to be offside on the Steelers. They'll be grateful for the whistle. 22 seconds remaining on Armstrong's hooking minor. Yeah, nice to just break up that little bit of pressure that Gommel have been applying on this power play. So excellent work. Even though it is offside on, on Phillips, I think, like you said, they're going to be happy for it. It makes it a stop-start play, and that's what you need to do. You're trying to break that pressure up, try to push the puck to anything, stop it up, and give your goalie a little bit of a break. He's had... Probably over 12, 15 shots so far this period. And a lot of them have been pretty qu good quality shots. Schultz to David Phillips. He doesn't want to get the puck in. It'll bounce and bobble, and Lubsky has to just turn it aside. Now the four checkers close in. Jonathan Phillips is trying to kill a little bit of time. Stick tapping begins to signal that the penalty is just about expired. John Armstrong can exit the box and get back involved in the defensive effort as Grigorenko tries to drive through the heart of the Steelers' defence. 
Uh, bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Two minutes remaining. Armstrong forward. Schultz just out of his reach. Taken away by Shushko. Armstrong. What a lift it would be for the Steelers if they could get something late in this second period. Grigorenko calmly forward. Couldn't take the return pass though, he's a little bit behind him. Jones quickly under pressure. Sent in on goal from a long way out by Kusheyev. Brust always wants to keep the play moving if he can. Hodgman, good work down the right wing side. Plays the pass across. Here's the opportunity for Ellaby. Oh, and he just got stick checked. Yeah, a little bit too long to get the puck away there. He's trying to pick his spot, and as he pulls it across, just gives the defender just a little bit of time to get in front of the play. Puck sets across, and the save made to deny Bovin by Brust. And then another one grabbed hold of by Barry Brust. He's been really busy in this game. Can't really fault him, really, on any of the goals, to be fair. He's been pretty solid in there, kept the... Uh, the Steelers in it, even though it is up by three, but great opportunity, high slot, just can't quite pull the trigger quick enough. Would have been nice, maybe a righty coming through there one time. It would have got the puck going towards the net, but being the lefty trying to get around that puck is very, very difficult to get it in stride. Cross with another stop. We're into the final minute of the second. Dommel leading by three, and so no signs of slowing up. Alex working hard to try and win the puck back in the corner. Making life difficult, but still Gommel resist. Through Danielson. Checked in the corner. Puck comes back with Razvodovsky. Steelers get onto it. Sachu Danielson trying to get it forward. Mosey. Dump it into the far corner. Valdix turns and goes to the bench rather than chasing after it. Final couple of seconds of the period then have Gommel got one last opportunity left in them. Phillips gets a block. The shot is sent goalwards. It hits Todd and doesn't get through to Barry Brust, who was beaten twice in the second period. A goal from Sekarin and a goal from Karabanov. That on the power play have given Gommel of Belarus a three-goal lead in this game. And remember the situation for the Steelers. If they lose this game by three goals or more, they need a favour from a limp against Allborg later tonight. Six points would not be enough in a three-way tie if Allborg win in regulation tonight. The Steelers' goal difference would see them eliminated. Still 20 minutes to go. Well, let's look back on the middle 20. And again, it was a period that had a lot of the same features as the first. It did. A lot of pressure Sheffield's way. Obviously, a few more power plays as well. Sheffield did get the one. It didn't work out for them. But that's the giveaway here that, that creates the second goal. As no one picks up the, 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 the trailer. And whether the Sheffield players are stretched a little bit too much and, and, a, and a pass into a, a bit of trouble of a spot. But a nice finish, high glove, Brust was there or thereabouts, just couldn't quite get his glove up quick enough as he's, as he's coming across. If you watch him, he's there, out, pushes out to meet it. But as he pushes out, just drops the glove down. But a, a, a nice read with, I think it's a 20-year-old that, that, that pops out into the top of the net. So nice, nice hands there for him. And then that one gets rung off the post of the crossbar just before the power play here. And... and the opportunities were coming thick and fast and Brust having to make a few saves back to back to back to keep Sheffield in it here at that point at, at, at only two. Seker in from Grigorenko got the first, then the power play goal, which came with Sointu in the penalty box. Five on four situation. And the tip in front from Karabanov. Another assist for Grigorenko, yes. 31-27. Shriksu Danielson just, just not doing quite enough there, getting caught on the on the defensive side, but great job by the Gommel player coming out of the corner for, or from in front of that, pushing his way, pushing his defenseman out of the area that he wanted to be in with this using his backside to back into him, and, and Danielson couldn't really do anything. If you see it here, he's, he, he, from, from that point on, he's in position, and Danielson can't do anything other than get that stick down and maybe hack and whack at the stick and lift it up and, and try and do something or work a little harder to get in front and it's just a simple play, but here, this is one that, that Todd just gets, tries to get a little bit of help from his, his partner there, and very, very lucky as, as it, 
Doesn't get called as a trip as well, but... I was going to say, Hodgman came flying Hodgman across came there, across, yeah. yeah, but this is the one here, just a little bit long, but credit to the Gommel player, just getting enough of a piece there. Is if you can get that shot away a little bit quicker, even a, 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 a one-timer on it, obviously a real difficult situation for a lefty coming in from that side. Could have made it 3-1 going into the, uh, the second intermission. But the worrying sign for the Steelers, then, is the best chance we can find from that second period is a shot that doesn't even get through to the netminder with just a minute remaining. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, they didn't do much on the power play. If they get another opportunity here, they have to change something, get shots raining in on the netminder and crashing the net. But the biggest thing is, is is supporting their players. You saw the penalty to John Armstrong. He had no support whatsoever going down on one on two. And and and, and the other way around, you look at it, is Gommel's always got two players in and around the puck. Whether they're just a little bit fresher, maybe they're a little bit sharper, but they seem to be the team that's pushing the play a little bit more. Sheffield is 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 reacting to the play; they're not acting to make the play, sort of thing, and, and that sort of thing that happens. So they have to try to regroup, refocus. They've got 20 minutes to score one goal. Doesn't matter if it's in the first minute or in the last second. They've only got to get one and keep Gommel off the score sheet. Is there a chance that Gommel might just change the way they play? They have the result they need now. Are they going to maybe sit back a little more? I, again, I don't know. You, you, the more you sit back, the more you just – anything can happen. Any bounce off the boards, any little giveaway, any little mistake, a, a shot from the corner goes off a skating in the net and you're back to where you, you don't want to be, and that's that 2-1 game. And then you're having to chase again, and then it comes to the last minute, and what do you do? So – to me, if, if, if you're, you're if you're them, you, you keep your foot on the gas, you keep forechecking, you keep pressuring pressuring Sheffield defensemen hard and, and even even high in the zone, uh, keep pinching the defensemen down the boards. You're there. Try and try and stretch it out to one more. If if you do get one against you, you still then again have the time and the opportunity to try and put one away yourself. Nervous? We are. Go and have a ten minute break. We'll see you on the other side of this. The Steelers' injury situation is still a concern, with Connolly, Armstrong, Latal, Graham and Shudra all missing. In better news, Todd and Ellaby are back, and it's a return to the lineup after a couple of years away for Brandon Whistle. The ninth place, five flyers are the visitors for this league fixture, and the Steelers know they can extend their lead at the top with another home win. DeLuca, pushed to the ground. Sacks through Danielson to Todd. He looks forward, it's tipped into the zone by Whistle. There's Valorand in the corner without any support, three and wide around him, and that's easy for the Flyers to win back. But then the physical hit coming in from Tanner Eberle. Todd. Trying to play the pass across, it's bouncing around. Flyers will eventually nudge it down the ice. Russ comes forward to play it. Touch of the stick, it's high off the glass. Stays in the offensive zone for Todd. Looking for a tip, save made, and then played with a high stick. That will not count. Waved off immediately. No goal for Robert Dowd. I he think disagrees. They need to yeah, I think Liam review this one. We'll have a little look as it pops up. Oh, yeah, maybe just, just if it hits the tip of his blade, not the heel of his blade, it does go in. Phillips, good backhanded pass. And forward for Mosey. Oh, and then the pass across. Opportunity for Schulz! The opening goal for Kevin Schulz. And the Steelers' pressure has finally told. Yeah, Evan Mosey doing a good job here. Takes two players coming to him, and no one picks up the defenseman coming through the middle of the ice. And then Schulz just comes in. Nice reception and a bobbly puck. Owen's all in the right spot, so it's tough that he ends up beating him here on the short side. He goes underneath the glove and just by the knee, so a pretty decent spot there. Owen maybe thinking he's going up a little bit high, catching him and moving a little bit left to right. You know, obviously that lefty coming in from that right side as well. As we see it on a bit quicker, closer angle, and you can see how quick it comes through that, uh, that Owen has to react to that. Owen saves that one with the pads. Hodgman around to Schulz. Shot on the turn, it's loose, it's there. Oh, what a save! Hodgman looks skywards. He can't believe that Owen has stopped that. Yeah, desperation pure and simple. That one there is 
Oh, and stretches across and gets it with a big tropper out there. But as you say, wide open net there. And unfortunately for Hodgman, Shane Owen recognizes it and gets across. In possession in the offensive zone, looking to double their lead. Oh, and there was an opportunity, and it just went wide, and it was nearly Schultz again. Phillips. Schultz. Dowd. Valorand. Takes the shot on, he gets blocked in front of Owen. Back to Valorand. That one loops up, and Owen punches it away. Back for David Phillips. Shot comes through. Must be for Eberle. Commentators uh, kiss there, I think, isn't it? We just said that he was looking for one. Doesn't need to be anything scary. A little bounce pass, anything. A rebound. Nice job by Phillips getting it through to the net. And there he is, Tanner Eberle, just beating his man. I think it's Peacock there. It gets him caught on the defensive side. Shane Owen can't handle that shot coming through. Whether it was a little bit of a wave and a flyby by Eberle as well. Just distracted him a little bit, but... Maybe that's the one that gets him going a little bit here. We'll see if uh, Sheffield can keep this relentless pressure up. Yeah, Fife done an excellent job keeping everything to the outside, not allowing anything. And they're, and they're quick to pounce on the puck to get it down the ice. So Sheffield pretty much disjointed on it. But like you say, not a, the regular sort of lineup that's out there. We'll see what happens on this one. Sent across for DeLuca. Hodgman across for DeLuca he'll snap it and it'll find its way through Owen got a piece of it but not enough of it and the Steelers have a power play goal yeah Hodgman with a great pass through the seam here I'm not sure if it if it goes all the way through if it goes through off DeLuca here it gets a good hard wrist shot away as it goes through does Soin to just help it on its way or is it already in its in the net off the post yeah hard to see I think it goes off the post I don't think Soin to is claiming too much of that, but good wrist shot from uh, Anthony DeLuca. But yeah, even a better pass right here. Hodgman just, just waits for it to open up. Nice little seam there. DeLuca arrives, gets it behind him. Good hard wrist shot off the toe. So a 3 0 Steelers lead as we approach. Well, just over four minutes remaining in the period, and Evan Mosey had no idea the puck was right underneath him. He's now got to get back and try and do some defensive work. McNicholas sends it across, and Brust got just enough on it. See, this can't get this one out of the zone. Flyers looking for an instant response. And they just conceded that power play goal. Saxu Danielson gets it for Hodgman, who can't get it back to his teammate. Flyers get onto it and they feed it across. The backhand shot is just wide. Did Brush just get a piece of it? I think the fans behind the goal think he did. Break opportunity for the Steelers. Saxu Danielson's in the middle. There he is! Adrian Saxu Danielson. A classic counter. Oh, definitely. Good hard work down below your goal line, 200 feet away. But what a nice pass here from, uh, from Mosey. Like you say, not very many shots on goal. He was the only one that didn't register one, but that's two fantastic passes to see. Two defensemen jumping up in the play, and that's what you want to see back door. Is somebody very, very happy to put one in the back of the net. Two Steelers goals in a minute and 15. And for Adrian Saxu Danielson, it's his third of the season. Saxu Danielson has that one taken off him. Flyers have got it at the side of the net. Switch it to Emmerdal. Tried to send it goalwards, it bounces off Soin to. Steelers play it quickly away. Hodgman, Mosey. Mosey gets round, trying to get it across towards Soin to. Flyers got a block on it. Hodgman plays the pass across and it's tapped in. Great hands in close. And the Steelers have their fifth and we haven't even finished two periods. Yeah, it's going to on the back door, but Hodgman does a great job. His head up's all the way here. Look, 
A little bit of a play, goes to his back end, drops. Oh, and he has to respect the shot might be coming and then uh, arriving at the back post. But good job in front of the net there by Evan Mosey as well. Tying up Isaacs on the near post so that he can't get his stick in the way. Danielson doing a good job keeping the puck down low and then they just cycle and go to work. Mosey goes right to the net. Owen is just totally transfixed. He has no idea that it's coming in back door. Puck comes out of the zone towards the Steelers bench. Gathered in by Dane Todd. Todd carrying it forward. I'm going to say that at some point this season, I expect Dane Todd to score the goal of the season. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, he's got such good skating ability and, and great hands, so uh, you can you can see something's coming definitely from him. McNicholas. Oh, look at that from McNicholas. Trying to go around Brust, and Brust stuck with him all the way. Made the save. Now the opportunity for Leskov. What a sliding block from DeLuca. Well, that would nearly have been the goal of the season, if not the goal of the game, at least from McNicholas. Those were wonderful hands and brust. The players are making their way back onto the ice at the Gigantium Ice Arena in Aalborg, Denmark. The Sheffield Steelers against HK Gommel of Belarus and the Steelers trail by three goals to nil. As it stands, they need a favour from Olymp Riga tonight, but they can sort this out for themselves with a good third period, Ron. Well, they can, you know, it's, it was very much one-way traffic here for a lot of the period and, and for a lot of the game, to be fair. First period was a little bit less, you know, 60-40, you know, like I said, but this period here was a little bit more one-way traffic. Barry Bruss doing a good job to keep it tight as, as they could. A couple of uh, uh, miscues and, and mistakes are the ones that have, have, have led to the, the stretch of the three goals, but it doesn't matter you score with one second left in this game. That's all you need to make it back to that 3-1, and that's that two-goal difference. So you go all out in the first minute, and you score your goal, you've got a lot of time to uh, to sit back and, and uh, try to absorb pressure. But Sheffield just got to be patient. They still got to work for each other. They still got to move the puck around, try and work and find those open areas. It's not going to take an awful lot. It's just going to take one good opportunity with the right shooter in the right spot. And hopefully they can close this game in. Steelers were outshot 19-5 to in the middle period. It's 34-19 overall. We saw the Steelers win with a low shot count the other day. They took their chances. They haven't had many chances tonight. They're going to have to generate some in this third period. Otherwise, it'll be fingers crossed. But they can control their own destiny. They just need to win this period. Forget the scoreline on the board. Reset it to nil-nil. Go play a 20-minute game and win it. That's the message, surely, from Aaron Fox. He knows the situation. They all do. And here's Hodgman with an early chance along for Latal, and that was an opportunity. Just tried to lift it over Lubsky. Didn't quite work, but it's an encouraging start to the period for the Steelers. Latal, who's finishing, has been so good so far this season. As Bruss makes the save, and he wanted to keep it alive, but Karabanov was closing in quickly. Yeah, just unfortunate at the other end. A nice little hard-working play there. Hodgman finds Latal on the uh, the back post, and boy, that would have been a nice one to get early. I know I said we don't want one early, but it would be nice to get it, and we'll see how Gomo would react. But again, it's 20 full minutes. 19:21 is what we've got left to play here, so there's all sorts of time for Sheffield to get back in here, and, and there's chances like that that may be few and far between, but when they do show up, you've got to try to finish as best you can. Again, struggling on the face-off. It looks as though the... Gommel winger was the one who was creeping in, and Armstrong's pointing that out. Yeah, I think the referee's given it. It's my fault, that one there, but nice to see uh, being accountable to himself, not getting the puck down when he wanted to. Steelers fans behind that goal. Been in great voice all weekend. And trying to inspire their team on to a comeback here. Forward by Suslow. Shot from the outside, but easily dealt with by Brust. Puck sent down the ice and back into the neutral zone. Certainly no blame on Barry Brust for the scoreline so far. Oh, definitely not. You know, like I say, the shots uh, that were, were very, very good and, good and high quality in a backdoor tap in. So he's done a lot to keep this team uh, in it at three. DeLuca again, always happy to shoot. Just need to get him shooting in a little bit closer area. 
outside stuff aren't going to really bother a lot of the goalies here. Good step up and intercept from Hodgman. I feel the Steelers need to just pick up the intensity of the passing and maybe move it a little bit quicker, try and beat the pressure that they're under from Gommel. Well, that's, that's the way you beat pressure is you get a first pass quick as they're coming in, you're going the other way. And a little stretch pass there that gives them a little bit of opportunity here to get some pressure on. Opportunity out front and a really good sliding block. Denies Schultz. Body on the line. More of what Sheffield needs. That's Oh, there's a big oh, high that's stick. A really high hit. Hodgman down again. He had another one of those earlier. He's checking for blood. We hope he's okay, but we also hope for a 2 plus 2. Yeah, it's a big, big clip under the nose. That's Sekarin. As Hodgman goes down, he's okay with it, but if there is any sort of red stuff around, it's going to be at least a two plus two. And it is, if it is there, yeah, it should be a, a double minor minimum or a five. Yes, four minutes has gone on the scoreboard. A two plus two to give the Steelers. Four minutes of power play time here. What an opportunity the Steelers have to get the goal they need. Yeah, just checking out to see if it's under the under his, his, his lip there. But yeah, you can see that there wasn't an intentional thing. He's trying to go for his first stick lift. But anytime you do a stick lift like that, you know, and you do miss, it's it's usually going to end up off the uh, off the face or the visor of the player. And it's it's just fortunate that it doesn't go up underneath the visor and catch anything up in the eyes and things like that. It's not a tip of the stick. It's more the the, the shaft of it. So. For all the the intents and purpose, yeah, it's a bad play, but it's a good thing that it wasn't uh, wasn't and could have been worse. Steelers will also want Hodgman back out on the ice. 17 assists in all competitions this season. Got 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 three minutes and 59 seconds to get out on the ice. Doesn't need to get that one second, one pass that he needs to get somebody to put the puck in the back of the net. So Sheffield just have to be again. They have to be creative, but they can't. They cannot rush the puck and put pucks into a bad situation. Almost going to put them under some pressure. I think they're not going to play passive. They're going to try and go after them here, but Sheffield just need to move the puck around and try to get that opportunity towards the net. Face off one cleanly, but out of the zone. Early in the period, better ice conditions will certainly help the Definitely. power play unit. Offside against the Steelers. That's not the start they were hoping for. Now we can build from a face off, though. He as long as he went and obviously Armstrong there just blew that pass to two defensemen on the on the offensive uh, draw the defenseman just couldn't react in time to that coming back with such speed but here again it needs to be a, a, a play that we can win and we can cycle the puck out to the wide players and get into the zone Schultz plays it across to Mosey back for DeLuca sends it around the outside Armstrong to it Mosey. Valdix, Armstrong. Mosey. Steps in, shot there, save made. Follow up from Valdix, it's a real scramble, and Gom will get onto it, and they can pick their spot down the ice to clear this one away. Yeah, it doesn't matter what sort of goal you get, a scrambly goal, anything is going to help, but good opportunity taking the puck to the net and, and creating that opportunity down in front of. Gommel's goal that they do have to have a slight panic in, in front of their own net. Hopefully trouble's brewing for them. Latar leaves it for Todd. Defenseman brings the Steelers into the zone. Towards Jonathan Phillips, and he got tipped away from him. And the Steelers will have to go back. Latal Out to the far side, and again, Gommel doing a good job of defending their blue line. No easy zone entries for the Steelers at all on this power play so far. Todd tries again. This time the Steelers are in. Can they get the play set up? Jonathan Phillips can't reach it, and the answer is no. And now an opportunity the other way, and Brush makes the save and quickly keeps the puck moving because there were two forwards down the ice. But the Steelers couldn't get onto it. It was a nice idea trying to use Gommel's own aggression against them. Yeah, just about worked off from just about two inches too far for him to, to make control, which is... Been the issue so far, just a not quite inch perfect passing. DeLuca sends it across, and again, there's no one there for the Steelers. Players are just watching, expecting other players to be in certain situations, and they're not there. 
Instead of reacting and getting there. We're into the second of the two plus two. And again, possession lost by the Steelers. Valdix is trying to win it back. Armstrong there to help out also. Kusheyev. Now Ivanchikov. So slow. Can Schultz reach it? No, he can't. It's been a power play of frustration so far for the Steelers. DeLuca knocks that one down, but his teammate's going to the bench, and it's just not working for the Steelers at the moment. Still power play time, though, a minute and ten with the extra skater. Latol turns on the speed. Sointu in the corner. Given a shove by Chilayev. Jonathan Phillips. Hodgman. Oh, and he loses an edge and falls down. And just when the Steelers had the player they want in the position they wanted him, it all falls down. Yeah, just unfortunate there. He got possession and, and took it away from trouble and was looking to set something up. And feet go up from underneath him. Todd carries the Steelers in. Across to the far side. Can the Steelers strike late on this power play? De Luca. Back to the blue line. Back to De Luca again. Go down low. Jonathan Phillips crashes the net. Instead, the Steelers look up high. Shot comes through. It gets blocked. De Luca trying to hustle back onto it. And he's knocked down. No penalty called. And Todd has to sweep up. Penalty is over. Sekirin is out of the box, and four minutes of power play have and come and gone for the Steelers. Up. Yeah, Deluca went another down one hard. On. Sorry, Deluca went down hard, and another penalty as Bruss gets to the bench. So three in succession here. Sheffield have to try to find something. So Bruss has gone for the extra skater, and Armstrong sends it across. There's plenty of snow over there, and Jones couldn't keep hold of it. Puck was touched. And that will bring about the whistle and another power play coming for the Steelers. Yeah, it was just in front of the Gommel bench as Deluca went down hard. You look along the, the Sheffield bench and you say to anybody, who wants it, boys? Who wants to go out there and, and be the hero so far to get out there? And every one of them should be jumping up and down trying to get on the ice. But a bit unlucky, but I'd be moving that snow right there where you see where Jones is. I'd be the first defenseman over there to move that away from the door. If anything, it comes up the boards to help me out. Evgeny Dadanov sits. Oh, and oh, they're going to they're going to call that a trip. It should be a dive. Yeah, it should be both really. Just three seconds into the power play. Yeah, good. What is it? Seven point five on the dive. Definitely off the face off. Unfortunately, Armstrong just gets tied up in there. But yeah, definitely helped himself out on that one. Suslo, who went down to the ice. The officials agree with him rather than John Armstrong. Although four on four, Sheffield got some pretty good uh, pretty good players that can move the puck around. It's a pretty good speed. We'll see what, what Gommel can counter with, but still a good opportunity here for Sheffield. Four on four, lots more open ice. Maybe we get the defenseman a little bit more active. One of them at least. Try and find something. Another false start on the face-off. It's been a real feature of this game. So we'll get a long period of four on four, followed by three short seconds of Gommel power play. That does mean that the Steelers power play is now 0 for 4 tonight. Mosey, great player to have in a four on four situation with all that extra space to use his skating speed. Sends it back door for Sointu. So just trying to gather the puck and get it under his control. He never really managed it. Barry Brush coming out to give his defense a little, a little bit of help. And he gets it to Schultz. And he gets it back to Sointu. Back with Schultz. Joining the play is Saxru Danielson. His shot is blocked and now he's got to get back as the chase is on. Ivanchikov will get to it in their support in the middle. Can Ivanchikov get it across? He can't because of the block from the legs of Saxru Danielson. Yeah, Schultz doing a great job trying to track back as quick as he could to get himself back in that play. So excellent work from both Sheffield defenders there. Latal for Todd. 
Back for Latal. Hodgman. Latal. Just lost it for a moment, quickly gathered it back in and played it towards Todd. It was just a little too far in front of him and Gommel knock it away. Better spell of puck possession though for the Steelers. Yeah, definitely. They're the ones that have been the aggressor on this four on four, but that's exactly what they got to be. They've got to use the time and space that they're out there to try to create something. It doesn't take an awful lot, especially if you're doing a little bit of man to man and somebody switches off for that split second. DeLuca. Spins it to Valdix. Turns around. Valdix driving the hard to the crease. Oh, and crashing the net. Puck is still alive. And play will continue, and the Steelers have got to get back here as leading the race down the ice is Karabanov. He drops it back. One time at no, they took the moment to just settle the puck down. It's a little, still a little choppy out there. It was Jones that crashed into the net, but had a little help from a Gommel player as well. We're back to five on five hockey. All the penalties are over. Dadanoff is out of the box, so too Armstrong. Shot into the crowd, bounce, bounces back to John Armstrong. And again, John Armstrong on his own. You can see players going to the bench and all four Gommel players just surrounding him and giving him nothing whatsoever. See, let's force a turnover though, it's Jonathan Phillips. He'll take the shot on and it's away from goal. Soing to couldn't carry the puck in. Seems like a lot of players are struggling on this near side as they're carrying the puck. It's just not sliding as they expect. No, there's not a lot of help from anything out on the ice at the minute. I think Sheffield, they're shouting for too many men on the ice as a player played the puck coming onto the ice as the other one going off wasn't off the ice completely yet. This one is going to be icing against Gommel. 10-18 remaining in this game. Well, you still got two blocks of five. That's how you break it down. That's how we would always break it down before. You've always got four blocks of five minutes. Try to get one in the first. Try to get one in the second. If you can't get it in, try to get it in the third or the fourth. You only need the one, remember. It doesn't matter where and when. You've only got to get one back to uh, to really put Gommel up. Then they'll be back on the uh, on the pressure here. So Sheffield still need to be working it in. Try for that opportunity. They've had a couple of decent chances. Just nothing going into the back of the net at the minute. It's actually Danielson did well to keep that in the zone. And now Hodgman. Sending it across to the far point. Now Saxu Danielson shooting through a crowd and he got blocked away. Very uh, unorthodox save there as the netminder was spinning around, ended up backwards. Hodgman. So he was trying to dance their way through traffic. It's not going to happen. He'll get it back for another go. Hodgman. Needs a little bit of support. Can't arrive in time. And now going the other way is Grigorenko. Plays the pass on, it reaches Kudratsev. Steelers take it back. Valdix, look at Jones driving hard to the net. Valdix shoots, the shot gets blocked before it gets through to netminder Lubsky. Yeah, I think all the Sheffield defensemen that are able are going to be active, trying to get up the ice and create that fourth man and that second wave coming through as DeLuca gets the puck through center ice. DeLuca to Valdix. Chiliaev trying to get there first. Kudratsev. Trying to clear it. Valdix gets back onto it. Resisting the attentions of Magaletsky. Does a good job not to take a holding penalty as he got on the wrong side. Ellaby. That one takes a deflection off Sekarin, goes up and out of play. And there's no question that the Steelers have been better in this third period. They have been. They've, they've, been, they've been more aggressive and, and, and trying to get to the puck. Obviously, the power plays have helped to give them that little bit of... Uh, confidence but they have to get a breakthrough on the power play so they've got to try to find something here I don't think they're gonna get any more I think almost gonna be pretty pretty calm and not put themselves in situations like they did behind the net there he, he, he knew he was in the wrong spot and threw his arms up in the air and just had his chest on the players because he knew anything going that way is gonna be a hold so Phillips again needs a good draw here just something to give him the possession and he wins it Schultz slaps it, and he gets all the way through to Lubsky, who saves and holds. Just what they need. That's what I mean. They need to get the guys through. The, the puck has to get through to the netbinder. But he's done a pretty good job not allowing any rebounds. That's the, that's the biggest thing that you can say is he does just see it through as it comes and hits him in the top of the chest and bounces down into his glove. Steelers.
others remember missing Eberly, Connolly, Dowd and Valorand from this game. How they'd love one or all four of those out there right now. They need a goal scorer, they need a hero. Gomel are also missing their top scorer from this tournament, Stanislav Kuchkin, their leading scorer in domestic play. Well, the reason he's suspended is he can't play in double IHF events because he got done for match fixing a couple of years ago. Steelers win this one back in their own zone. Schultz leads the charge. Sent in for Sointu to go after it. Takes a strange bounce back out. Sointu will get to it. Schultz. Loses an edge but keeps possession. Graham. Steelers trying to bring it out front. Hodgman trying to carry it around and stick Handel through. He's done a really good job. There's Graham. Great save made by Lubsky. And then we all pile in hoping for something loose. Yeah, great play there by Hodgman going around and Alex Graham doing a good job getting himself in the open there, getting into the high slot and gets a nice little one-timer away, but the netminder really stretching out to make sure that he gets a piece of this. Look at Graham, all sorts of cover there, but pretty good shot as he, everybody gets cleared out in front and comes in late, but excellent work from the players involved to carve out any sort of opportunity there. A little stick tap from Graham to call for the pass. He knew he was in a good position. And Hodgman saying a puck should be on the other side of the ice. Well, Alice Graham was on the other half of the, of the of defensive zone, so maybe a little bit of a, the right point. Now every faceoff gets more and more important, doesn't it? Defensively, you can't give anything up. Offensively, you need to get that win. Hodgman has it. He'll come out of the zone, though, and Gommel will try and counter. Sent forward by Ambrzejczyk. Smart little play. Didn't have a play two on two. Just puts the puck into the corner. Shot from a long way out, and Brust goes across with the blocker. Hodgman up the boards. The Steelers want to get this out, and they do so. Saxru Danielson. Long pass forward. Armstrong tied up. He's trying to emerge from the pile. Can't do so with possession. It's back with Ellaby. Puck is tipped in. The chase is on for Valdix. Magaletsky gets to it first. Again, the puck chops down the ice, and the Steelers are doing a better job at getting to loose pucks first now. They're enjoying more possession in this third period. But time is not their friend. Under seven minutes to go. They must get a goal from somewhere. Otherwise, they need a huge favour this evening. De Luca. Doesn't find Mosey, and that'll be icing. 6.30 left in the game. Again, there's still plenty of time left. We've got... Opportunities had a couple, two or three now that have troubled the Gommel defenseman. So, again, Sheffield not without the chances to get themselves back in this game. It's just that last little finish that they desperately need. Good work from Schultz to get that out from between his skates and away from trouble. Russ settles it down. The Steelers will have to build from. Behind their own end line. Armstrong. And they just played the pass, the wrong side of the blue line, and the Steelers go offside. How long does Aaron Fox wait to uh, have a little whistle to uh, to Barry Brust as well? Obviously, you don't want to go down four, but that really puts it puts it out to lunch. But. At some point here, he's got to be thinking to himself, when am I going to do it? Usually it's sort of between sort of two minutes to 90 seconds, but the situation's a little more desperate than just a regular Elite League game. It is at that, but, you know, you pull them too early at two minutes and you get one against you, you're kicking yourself for pulling it that too early. Gommel have been pretty good moving the puck from defense to offense and stepping up just like that. Ivanchikov. 
Chasing after it is Bovin. Steelers get to it. They don't get a clearance though. Book with Kusheyev. Bovin kept away from it. Physical work from Saksu Danielson. Norwegian gets it back. Fires it forward. It takes a deflection to the corner. Sign two trying to get to it. Scramble in the corner. Ivanchikov is sat on his backside. Gommel didn't get it clear. Jonathan Phillips goes rink wide. Sam Jones waiting at the blue line. He'll still look to play it towards the crease. It bounces back. Off the netminder Lubsky. And Gommel will get this one down, but they'll actually get it into their own team bench. And so the face-off will stay at the right end of the ice from a Steelers perspective. Yeah, another nice little pressure point there from Sheffield. Phillips goes cross ice and a little deflection down low, but Gommel netminder there is over and across and ready for it here. So Hodgman there just pointing his stick, putting it to where he wants that defenseman to be. Hopefully going to win this draw back for that sort of quick shot again. Five minutes to go. Hodgman bounces away. Now he's got to try and do some defensive work. Throws his hands up and says he's not holding or hooking. He doesn't have the puck either, and Brust called upon to make another stop and tip that one up and away. Yeah, he just leans over and takes it off the shoulder, Barry Brust there. As you say, under five to go. Now we're getting into a little bit of the last sort of chance saloon, but again, it only takes one second there. You see Brust lean it over and just gets a piece of that. Valdix wins the draw for Todd. Trying to escape down the left side. Doesn't happen. Still trying to barrel his way through. Good physical play from Saxu Danielson. Putting in the hit in. What have the Steelers got left in them? De Luca. His shot deflects to the corner. Will it come to Valdix? Not quite. Suslo. And Saxu Danielson cuts him off. Jonathan Phillips knocks it past Grigorenko, but only finds a Gommel player. He sends it back in behind Brust's goal, and the time continues to tick. Now approaching four minutes remaining. Latal. Crowded out over there. And the ice conditions are poor over on that side. You can see all the snow up against the boards. Played in by Armstrong. Goes after it himself. Can't get a block on it. Now he's going to peel away to the bench. Kuzhkovsky. Kovalov. Steelers fans still making great noise. Mosey to Schultz. Long pass out intercepted. Kusheyev. Seems to be a little bit less ambition now from Gommel when they're in possession. Just trying to get the puck in deep, forcing the Steelers to go the full length of the ice. We're under three minutes to go. The shot blocked in front by the Steelers. Magaletsky sends it into the corner. The Steelers win it back. Now they've got to try and break down the ice. Hodgman, it's a good pass. Jonathan Phillips with the shot and the glove save from Lubsky. Yeah, Lubsky making a nice save there, but Hodgman again creating the opportunity for the trailer. Jonathan Phillips coming in. Player goes down to block it, maybe unsights the netminder just a little bit here, but good save. Glove up in the right spot as Jonathan Phillips looks a little bit skyward, but again, good pressure, good opportunities. Under 240 to go here, Sheffield really getting to the last part of this game. Aaron Fox still has his timeout available. Not going to use it just yet. Todd. Sends it on goal from the outside. It's a comfortable save from Lubsky. Still does a love a power play around about now. As long as they don't give one up. <laughs> Saxu Danielson. Russ still stands deep in his crease. 
No sign that he's going to head to the bench just yet. Jonathan Phillips can't carry it in deep. Schultz. Todd. Brust glances over at the bench. Stays put for the moment. Final two minutes then. And Steelers won't know their fate until the result of this evening's game. If the scoreline stays as it is, Latal. Steelers need to try and win this puck back. Will they keep it in the zone through Mosey? Yes, they do. Armstrong. Now it's Latal. Can the Steelers work it into a shooting position across to the far side? Armstrong. Got a battle to get onto this. Keeps it away from Grigorenko. Towards the crease and tipped out. Latal. Rust is gone for the extra skater. It's Schulz. There's traffic in front. If the Steelers can get a shot through, they can't. It's blocked and it'll get down the ice and the Steelers have got to get onto this one. And they will through Mosey. Hodgman loses out. Armstrong takes over. Buck is behind the goal, but Gommel are onto it and they'll clear it away and Hodgman has it back. Steelers are facing 45 seconds in which they need to score a goal. All the way through from Todd, and then cleared away by Gommel. Back with Ellaby, 30 seconds left. Have the Steelers got something dramatic left in them? This one's going to go down the ice. Will it be icing? Yes, it will. 20 seconds. Separate the Steelers. They're going to lose this game. The question is by how many? Well, yeah, to be fair, even even, even at 3 nothing, Fox is... is, is Really taking a chance here, because obviously if they, if they do get a point tonight, they still go through. So something's got to give. So we've got to see what gets drawn up on the board here. Six on five off the draw. The usual biggest thing you got to do is win the draw. But what it was was you saw Hodgman and that where they were out there for at, at about a minute and a half and ended up making a change after being on a long shift. So they're trying to get some win back in the sail so to speak but there's fox on the bench trying to set something up always got 30 seconds they'll have been through this before six on five obviously with with different players possibly on the ice that aren't on the ice today but at the end of the day there's more than enough skill and intensity left in these guys for 20 seconds is this a matter of winning the draw and if they don't they've got to get three guys on the puck to get it back to create something out in front of the net and then you're just putting it in there and see if something might pinball off anything as Aaron Fox drawn up a master plan. And can the Sheffield Steelers execute it? No surprise that Hodgman is going to go and take the draw. Six on five. Brust pulled for the extra skater. You can see what Gommel's trying to do. They've overloaded the inside of the ice and trying to draw it back that way. And they do. Can they get it out of the zone? No, they can't. DeLuca got onto it, but there's a chance to clear it. It's a real scramble. Can the Steelers get onto it? They can. Ten seconds. It's got to be now, but it's poked away from Schultz. The empty net gapes, and Gom will find it. And the Sheffield Steelers now have a nervous wait for the next few hours. They're going to lose this game by four goals to nil. And Gom will know that that's enough. They're going through. The question is, will it be the Steelers, or will it be Allborg who join them? The Steelers had to gamble, but it's not worked out. And with four seconds to go, it's 4-0 to Gommel. Yeah, Sheffield just unlucky there. They had the opportunity. They worked hard to try to get the puck back to the defense and ended lots of pressure there by the Gommel top end. And that's what leads to the turnover and pops it out of the zone. And then it's just a free ride down into the open net. So the final few seconds then will play out. But the Steelers know that they're done for in this game. All eyes go on the final fixture in Group F. Allborg against HK Olymp. And for the next few hours, we are all right behind the Latvians. The Steelers have not got the job done today. Two wins out of two, but they couldn't get anything from this match. And it means that Gommel will go through 
and we have to wait a little longer to see who will join them. If Allborg win in regulation, it is a three-way tie with three teams on six points. The goal difference is decided in the games just between those three teams, and Gommel know they are above the Steelers, and the Steelers would not be above Allborg in that tiebreaker. Well, I mean, a battling performance today. Obviously, the third period was probably their best period throughout the game. They did have a few chances here and there, but Gommel did a great job absorbing the pressure that they had. They were doing pretty smart when they did get the play. The puck possession that they did have, they just sort of let it flow down into the corners, allow Sheffield to have come 200 feet. A couple of times we saw that, so, you know, a smart play by uh, by Gommel just to not push the play too much and not give Sheffield too many real open chances. Matthias Sointu is man of the match for the Sheffield Steelers. Igor Karabanov is the man of the match for HK Gommel. And we now need to pause for the national anthem of the winning team, which today comes from Belarus. Victory for HK Gommel, they are through to the final of the Continental Cup. And now we have to wait to see whether or not the Sheffield Steelers will join them. Three games in three days, down four imports. The Steelers gave everything they had, which tonight, Ron, was not very much at all. They had an empty tank. They couldn't generate the goal that they needed to save themselves. No, they couldn't. They had they had the opportunities, obviously, in, in, in certain areas. At some point, they had a good uh, spell of... Uh, of power play chances in the third period. They couldn't find a way past the uh, the Gommel defense and, and Netminder, who put a lot of pressure on Sheffield today. It was It's much like the Alborg game. Uh, maybe a little bit more direct to the net for the for the Gommel guys, but a couple of good opportunities there. And Latal had one right off the start as well from the beginning of the game. You know, Sheffield did have a, or a beginning of the period, sorry. So there's a there's a, the high sticking penalty there that, that does draw uh, the, the Claret and the Red onto the ice. So a four minute power play where one or two chances, maybe this was probably some of the best, some of the scrambles in around, but Gommel doing a great job collapsing to the front of the net, finding what they needed to do to get the puck out, and Sheffield just couldn't find that breakthrough, even though they did have a couple of good opportunities again here, driving the net. Jones goes flying into the net there with a little help from the uh, the Gommel winger on the back side, but more pressure from Sheffield was what the, was needed, and they did do it. They did have the opportunities, so it, it, it's something that they did try here. This is going to be Hodgman there, Alex Grant popping out to a good spot. As you said, a little stick tap there, and Netminder comes up big, and again, Gommel collapse in tight to protect any sort of rebound whatsoever that comes out. Credit to Gommel, there was eight minutes to go at that stage, and that was really the best chance the Steelers generated. I think so. I think you're absolutely right. You know, they didn't they didn't have some some great chances. I mean, that's a that's a good shot by Jonathan Phils, but it's a, he's going away from the net, not getting everything he wants on it, still from a little bit of a distance, and. The effort level was was there. It just wasn't quite enough. And this is the pressure here that the defenseman has nowhere to go with it. And that's the absolute icing on the cake for Gommel. So they will be through. Will the Sheffield Steelers be through? Just to confirm one final time the situation tonight, there's a match between Olymp Riga and the host Olborg Pirates. Olborg need to win in regulation. If they do, they are through. Any other type of win is not enough for Olborg. It's only two points for a win in overtime or a shootout. That would leave them on five, still behind the Steelers on six. So anything at all that Riga can get from this game sends the Steelers through to the Continental Cup final in January, the weekend of the 7th, 8th and 9th. 
The Steelers would love to be there. But unfortunately, Ron, it is now out of their hands. It is for sure. You know, you, it's it's a terrible feeling when you have to rely on another team. They had the opportunities in this game. I mean, again, like you say, down four players. They're not going to make an excuse being down four players. They had, they had guys on the ice. Yeah, they're going to be tired. They're going to be this and they're going to be that. But you always know that going into, into Europe, into competitions, that a lot of the other teams are going to have four lines. They always did when we played way back. We would go in with three lines. They'd have four lines and, and players sitting in the crowd. It's just the way that the game was. Uh, the roster size is, is, is what it is. There's no extra help anywhere that you can you can you can really call on, especially at, on on a week's notice or two or three days' notice to get them back in. So you know, hopefully the players that uh, that are off out, they do get uh, back soon uh, through their injuries and they get back and they can get back and help the guys that are are playing a little bit too much now and the guys playing now can get a rest in that that uh, that don't get injured for for the, the domestic stuff. How are the players going to approach this next few hours then? Because you know you'll you'll go back to the hotel and have something to eat, but. You want to be checking your phone every couple of minutes to see if uh, Olympia are doing what they need you to do. I think so. I think they're they're also going to just sort of maybe forget about it a little bit because they know it's not in their hands. I mean, there's nothing they can do about it. They can't influence the game any. So you may as well just go back, relax, and and uh, and try and get yourself fit for the weeks coming up. You've got travel coming back. You got your own games coming up the next weekend. Uh, time to refocus onto things like that and and uh, draw a line under this part of the of the of the cup. You can't do anything about it. Got to wait and see. If it comes through, you can have a little celebration tonight. But They've done well with what they've got. They've worked very, very hard. They were they were out outmatched in, in in some of the games here coming down with with that four lines. And I think that's what really told on them. They they did the best with what they had. They worked hard. They created a couple of chances, but they just couldn't put it in the back of the net. If the Steelers were to go out, can they feel unfortunate? Two regulation wins not being enough to progress. Well, I think so. I think you know you you think two's enough to do it, and and uh, you know they they worked very hard to get those wins. You know the first game, you know they took their their couple of chances very very well. They scored goals when they needed to. The second game, they were they were by far the aggressor in it. Um, and today, a little bit more on the back foot, three and three again. I thought they'd be more tired in the third period than what they were. They had more. It seemed they had more gas in the tank in the third period to push it out maybe helped by the power plays but they they, they seem to come through with a, a, a lot more um, concerted effort towards the goal trying to get that goal whether it was a desperation thing or not but they were definitely working hard as a unit trying to get that puck and and making plays to uh, to create something well that is it from us here in the studio it's been a pleasure to be able to bring these three Sheffield Steelers games to you in the Continental Cup from Allborg but for now all we can do is sit and wait and hope. Thank you very much for joining us, and fingers crossed, we'll be back in January.